Uh, nothing like some violence to kick off. Come on. Black Friday, 90 minutes away from kickoff over on ABC. It's the pack of the heels. Coach Mac Brown, all smiles, looking good with the Jordan logo as rivalry week gets kick started here. Coach Doran looking cool with the vest on. Start of the season 4-0. A lot of injuries, a lot of adversity they face. They're currently three and four. Nothing better than knocking off a rival today. And that's just the beginning. Take a look at rivalry mm, week across the Oh, come on. You got UNC, NC State, Florida, Florida State. Things continue tomorrow. Georgia Tech, Georgia, clean old-fashioned hate. South Carolina, Clemson, and Louisville, Kentucky, just to name a few. Come on into the studios. I'll name a few other guys for you. EJ Manuel, Eric McLean, Jordan Cornette. I missed you guys last week. Yeah, yeah man. Glad you're back. back. Yeah. Glad you're back. Solid haircut, fade. Yeah, it looks beard. good. Looking young good. Olympian. Like young Olympian. Come on. I <laughs> as for the game we're approaching here in about 90 minutes, UNC and NC State, as for the last 10 meetings in the series, they've been decided by just over three points per game. The smallest win over that span came last year when a combined 40 points were scored in the second half of the game that went right down to the wire. One of the fired up rivalries in all of the ACC. It is a sellout crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium. NC State down nine, one timeout left. Leary's got to take a shot. That's a player wide open. NC State is going to score. Omeka Omezi, 64 yards. We're not done yet, Riley. State set for the onside kick. NC State. They're going to throw it. Leary's going to take a shot. Has a receiver. It is caught. Touchdown, NC State. Omeka Amezi from 24 yards out. NC State comes back to win in one of the all-time greats in this series history. Tell you what, it, it's not the only close game the UNC has played since Mac Brown took over in 2019. UNC has played 18 games decided by four points or less, the most in college football during that span, including six this season. EJ, I, I'm not a gambling man. That's a bull fight fly. <laughs> I, I absolutely, I absolutely uh, am. I can feel Emac looking at me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to the masses today. I absolutely am. Uh, do we expect this one to be down to the wire? It seems like Tar Heels have a penchant for it, and this matchup does as well. I expect this one to be down to the wire, and again, it's because of the rivalry that's within. It. You know, you think of these defenses for both sides. Carolina's defense has gotten better as the season's gone on. NC State's defense has pretty much been the bell cow for them the entire year. Uh, Drake Thomas is his last opportunity to play against the Carolina Tar Heels. And the fact that the Tar Heels had a rough game against Georgia Tech, you're going to want to see them play much, much better football offensively, just be more efficient. So I'm expecting it to come down to the wire. I think it absolutely can, EJ, especially when you look at, okay, can, can they replicate it all, NC State, what Georgia Tech did? How did they do that? They got a lot of pressure on Georgia Drake May send blitzes. You got to win your one on one matchups. Corey Durden has to go absolutely off, do his thing. If that's the case where he's running for his life, he didn't perform well against the blitz last week. If they can hit him, get him on the ground, then you expect, okay, some magic can happen here. A lot of uncertainty, though, for NC State. Don't know who's playing quarterback. Don't know who's playing center. Don't know if wide receivers are there. Yeah. Linebacker, there's a couple injuries. You yeah. don't think matters. that matters. I don't think it matters. Wow, why? Again, when you watched Finley in the last game, I felt like he got hotter as sure. the game went on. I know Chambers Chambers started, North Carolina right. defense, Chambers started, and again, I just feel like Chambers doesn't have that passing presence that he's going to scare a defense, mm -hmm. but Finley does. Yeah. So depending on who does start, I agree sure. with you, E, but I think as far as whoever it is, it's a rivalry game, man. Anything yeah. can happen. Which right. team mentally is picking themselves up off the map more? I mean, it's an NC State team. It's three and four in their last seven. It's a UNC team that was trying to go undefeated. Drake may trying to win a Heisman. That kind of hit the skids last week. Mm -hmm. Which team's battling more mental adversity coming? I, I think it is because of the injuries, maybe NC State, because again, you, you have a guy in Devin Leary. Man, Heisman potential, ACC champion potential, all these expectations. He goes down. And we have Jack Chambers. We're going back and forth. Then we have MJ Morris. Oh, we're so excited. And then he gets injured. And then, of course, we see Finley come in, do serviceably. You kind of know what, what <coughs> UNC has. It, it was a really weird type of game, a very uncharacteristic type of game. So I think it's more so NC State has to figure out how to win again. Carolina, I think, is picking themselves off the map more yeah. because they lose surprisingly to Georgia Tech. 
and you're finishing out the season, and then all the hype for Drake May about the Heisman, and mm-hmm. he's the guy, he's the guy. It's almost more about him than maybe the team. And not, not necessarily just about him, but even with Josh Downs having uncharacteristic mm-hmm. drops to win the game. I mean, I've seen him make one-handed catches easier than that. Right. So I would say Carolina, how do they get – you know, over that last game and adversity-wise move forward to this week. Big win would create some momentum going into Charlotte as they take on Clemson. That championship game already announced. We will be there for that one on December 3rd. As for the head man of these Tar Heels, Mac Brown, 30-11 and 11 versus in-state conference foes, including his first tenure in Chapel Hill. And over the last 10, he and the Heels 9-1. and one. Today, the analytics, the nerds, say they have a 61% <laughs> chance to beat the pack. Tom Lugabill caught up with Coach. Well, Coach, you guys have been prolific on offense all year long, and then you stubbed your toe a week ago. How do you get back on track versus what's going to be the best defensive football team you've faced all year? Tom, you do the little things right, and, and that, that was it. You, you go back and look at it, and you didn't score in the red, didn't score touchdowns in the red zone. You, you got in trouble on first and second down, so you were third and long, and you're 4-14 on third downs. And give Georgia Tech credit. We just didn't do the little things to put us in position. We, we throw an interception, which is unlike us. We, we drop a touchdown pass in the fourth quarter, which is unlike us. We don't make two fourth downs, which is unlike us. Uh, so we just got to go back and start over and be the offense that we've been. You've been a part of uh, an awful lot of really good rivalries in college football. What makes this NC State-North Carolina rivalry unique to you? It's in-state. It's very much like Texas and Texas A&M. You'll have fans today that, that'll have family members here that are wearing red and blue and wives and husbands that don't speak this week and a lot of people that work together that don't want to talk to each other on Monday if they lose so they'll be sick and miss work. And that's what rivalries are all about. I told the players today, it's not about you guys as much as it is the people who are going to be hiring you when you get out of school. So if you play good today, they're going to be a lot more likely to like you and hire you. And, and these are games that you're remembered for forever. Well, Coach, thanks so much and good luck today. Thank you and, and happy Thanksgiving weekend to everybody. Rivalry weekend's the most fun time of the year for me. Not everybody gets to be in a championship, but everybody has a rivalry. Everybody has somebody they want to beat and that's what today and tomorrow are about. Well said, Coach. Thanks. Forget LinkedIn. Just win the damn game against the rival. <laughs> Drake May getting set for today's rivalry game versus the Pack. Last week, the freshman phenom held without a pass TD for the first time this year as the heels fell unexpectedly to Georgia Tech 21-17. The loss shouldn't be put solely on May's shoulders as the offensive line, they gave up six sacks in that game. EJ, we got to expect more from that offensive line coming into this one, no question. Absolutely expecting more, but I also think Coach Phil Longo can help that offensive line by going to some quarterback draw, some running back draw, some quick game to get the ball out of Drake May's hands, and also maybe even keeping some tight ends in to help solid up that pass protection because even going back to the Wake Forest game, they had the right tackle. He was getting whooped by Wake Forest's defensive end, causing pressure, sticking him in the neck, uh, running past him, getting to Drake May. And again, any quarterback, I don't care how good you are, you have people in your lap when you try to throw the football, it's hard. You can't just step up. You can't throw accurately. And that's what happened to Drake May last week. We're going to do a little bit of a tape later today. I'm going to show you some of those problems. Not all of it on the offensive line. There were a couple of times where Drake has to make a quicker decision, where a tight end has to finish his block, where a running back has to insert properly. And that didn't quite happen. But that's going back to that uncharacteristic deal. Maybe maybe without one of the tight ends, though, in that game. Yeah, I think that certainly hurt. Absolutely. And and when you don't have your key receiver, that takes things a little longer to to really break down and find that out. So – Ultimately, uncharacteristic from six drops for three or four overthrows for an interception where Drake just didn't see the guy in man-to-man coming across the play and then the six sacks. For me, man, that game is a total wash it. Don't talk about it. Don't think about it. Let's move on. How do we keep going forward? So for NC State, they're watching that game film. They aren't just watching that. I'll put it in a rear view. They are studying that all week. Does NC State have the personnel to emulate what we saw from Georgia Tech in that upset win on the defensive side? I don't think there's any question. I think they have the better defense. They have the more consistent defense. You know, Georgia Tech, if, if there's a compliment that you can give about them, is that defense at times has been electric and they can get after anybody. But, E, when I see what NC State has done, when I see those linebackers, when I see big Corey Durden up front, those defensive ends that have done such a great job, they can wreak havoc. They can create that. It's just, do I want to be a little more uncomfortable sending guys, blitzing just a little bit more to try to get home? I would not send a lot of blitzing against Drake May. Now, I will say they have a corner. He's uh, not exceptional against the blitz. True. He's not exceptional. True, true. But I feel like when you play blitz, you're 
your back half is kind of yeah. on the island. They're by mm-hmm. themselves, right? So I feel like a corner like Aiden White, who had four <coughs> interceptions on the season, yeah. how did he get those interceptions? A lot of it was from zone. You know, it wasn't necessarily just jumping routes and picking up guys off. Uh, and then again, you have Josh Downs. You have uh, these receivers that can make so many plays down the field. If you do bring the blitz, I, play, I would play some zone behind it. But yeah. I do think that's a good recipe for NC State to get some sure. good advantages in their favor. Yeah, one thing is for certain, uh, the nation's eyes will be on this game. Coach Mac Brown talked about play well. Somebody may want to hire you down the road. Drake May has an opportunity to change everything here today with a big-time game at 3.30 on a big-time stage yeah. to continue what – he's automatically in New York, right? I it's just so. about going to try and win this thing. That's so, right. uh, coming up. MJ Morris, will he take the field in about 90 minutes for this matchup of UNC and NC State? No announcement yet on the star freshman quarterback as we are within 90 minutes of kickoff. Two starts this season. We've seen the great. We've seen some struggles. Comes with being a young guy. But one thing for certain, he can really hurt you if he gets going. Uh, we talked about recruiting and schools getting their bang for their buck. I got a couple blind resumes from some guys here. I'm going to tell you what their story was, and you give me their name. Here's blind resume of the first one. Uh, after attending Heritage High School in Wake Forest, North Carolina, this player received zero football scholarship offers, walked on with his current team, and he now just needs eight touchdown receptions to surpass his high school mentor for most receiving tutties in program history. Huh. I think this one's pretty obvious. <laughs> this is pretty, pretty obvious. obvious. Pretty bland, if you ask me. Uh, I'm going to go with <laughs> NC State guy, probably. I'm going to go with Thayer Thomas. It's got to be it. Thayer Thomas yeah. is correct. His 25 yes. touchdowns trail Start. only Torrey Start. Holt Start. among Pac all time. His 209 career receptions, second most in team history, and he's just 11 more yards this season to set a career high. They take on North Carolina today. He's going to have to be, have a big-time game. No, th- there's no question. I mean, whoever is playing quarterback, we spoke about that earlier today, that they're going to have to get comfortable into this game. Is it Finley? Is it Morris? Is it Jack Chambers? Who is going to be the guy? The only thing you need to know is get it to five. Get it to our guy Thayer Thomas. He's electric. He's a go-to guy. It's, he's also a guy that you can get it to him in, in a slant, in a short route, and he can take it to the house. He has to be involved heavily. He's also a double-pass receiver. He could throw the ball. So I don't Sling. know how many touchdowns he has. You could have put that on the stat sheet as well. <laughs> that would have given it away, of, though. I'm <laughs> just saying he's throwing a couple of touchdown passes as well. So if he does catch the ball, don't, don't just assume he's running down the street. Yeah. yeah, I mean, talk about that. A walk-on who's out there setting career it's records. Yeah, it's awesome. Same conversation. It's Torrey it's Holt. A great story, too. Wow, that is a great story. Yeah, a pretty impressive young guy for certain. Continues to dazzle. He's gonna take it for a touchdown. Emotion boils over on the last play of the game. So it's a it's a different level of competition and it really hits home. Like you got bragging rights in the state. Records don't matter. Both could be 12 and 0. We could be 0 and 12 going into that game. It's it's still gonna be a battle. Bragging rights, good for recruiting, the fans. Like I said, bragging rights and just pride. And the teams come together in the end zone. Pushing, shoving. It's a, it's a bad taste in your mouth. Uh, you got to wait a whole year. They're right down the road, 25, 30 minutes away. As a receiver, it is touchdown, NC State. As guardian of the program, I want to bring that to them. 364-day luxury of talking smack. It's like no other. It's amazing. It is over. NC State comes back to win in one of the all-time greats in this series history. These two teams have met 11 times entering the day, and the Heels have more than six, won more than 68 of them. The Wolfpack grabbing 37, and six ended in a tie. We better not have a tie today. What we do have is Tom Luganbill, who's part of the coverage out there hanging out. He's got his coat on looking crispy. And let's talk about it, Tom, the quarterback position for the Pack. Are we going to see MJ Morris at quarterback? What's the news? Do you have any? Yeah, I don't think we're going to, guys. He came out pregame warm-up, was in street clothes, uh, has not moved into full pads as the rest of the quarterback group has. So I think what we'll expect to see is Ben Finley get his second start tonight. We'll see Jack Chambers come in as part of the NC State run game, a little bit of a change of pace. And then you're just going to have to work around the youth and the inexperience if you're Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator for NC State, and try to get the ball to the hands of Thayer Thomas as much as you can. So unfortunate for NC State. The injury bug has just eaten them alive, particularly a quarterback. Tom, Drake Mays, magical season, hit a skid a week ago in the loss versus Georgia Tech. As a former quarterback yourself, an assessor of talent, what kind of response do you expect to see from QB1 today? 
Oh, I think he'll play very, very well. And I, I think that they've, they've had a chance to press the reset button just a little bit. You know, we got so accustomed to watching this North Carolina offense make it look easy. And then you start to lose an appreciation for when all of a sudden it's not easy. And then you get frustrated. Then you start to press a little bit. I think we saw some of that from Drake May. And, you know, one of the number one rules of thumb in offensive football is to take what the defense gives you. So if folks are going to take away the vertical shots, going to take away so many of these explosive plays that North Carolina has had all year, then every now and then take the check down, take the bubble screen, take the quick screen, and let the targets do the rest. So I think it's going to enforce some discipline for Drake May this week to get back to the principles of the offense. If the shot's there, take it. But if not, check downs get first downs. Tom, Antoine Green returns for the heels. This is massive without question. What kind of spark can he provide? Absolutely huge, guys. I, I think that with Josh Downs and all of the different places that they line him up, when you don't have that threat opposite of him, it doesn't force the defense to have to account for the entire width of the field. Antoine Green can take the top off the defense. He's extremely difficult to tackle. He's really good one-on-one -on -one in contested 50-50 balls. So now, all of a sudden, if you want to put Josh Downs on the slot to the white side of the field, you put Antoine Green into the boundary, you don't just get to roll coverage to Josh Downs. I think that's going to open some things up in the passing game, not just for Josh Downs and not just for Antoine Green, but between the numbers for three very talented tight ends for North Carolina. Tom Luganbill, thankful for you, buddy. Have a great call. We'll be listening. You bet. Thanks, guys. Guys? He ain't talking to the guys. It's just me. <laughs> I mean, I hey, the fade on. looked clean, bro. That was a good angle. I, that, that was sweet. You the picture for the grand. Did, 35 minutes away from kickoff <laughs> there in Chapel Hill, and we heard it from Tom Luke and Bill. Bill fin ben Finley will get the start. Not Bill. Ben is going to get the start for the pack in place of MJ Morris here. I mean, this is a pack group that just continues to face adversity. Quarterback yeah. carousel Jeez. because of injury. Not just injury there, but everywhere for a group that had historic expectations coming into the season. What's the headspace for them here today? Man, it's just trying to figure it out. It's just the next play in front of you, looking at the guys that have gone down with Grant Gibson, with Peyton Wilson at times, with the running back and Demi Sumo. All these different pieces that are moving around. Devin Leary, my goodness. It's something where you have to have that next man up mentality times 10. You have to be able to figure out. You have to have brothers come together in that locker room right before kickoff and say, how are we going to do this? What can I do to best serve my team? And, EJ, that, that's why I think this mental piece – it's just a little bit bigger for NC State. Yeah, the mental piece is definitely going to be an aspect in this game. But Ben Finley played well when he had opportunities last well, you've been, you've been high on him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not extremely high. No, but I, I feel like he's a serviceable quarterback. He can go out there and win you a football game, especially if the defense, which has all these seniors, Tanner Ingle, uh, Drake Thomas, uh, Isaiah, like all these guys that can get after the quarterback. And even if you can't get sacks on Drake May, get them down in the open field. That's going to be the huge part that – uh, Tom didn't really say. I mean, he talked about Antoine Green taking off the top of a defense, but also these guys, uh, Carolina's skill players are great in space. So if you can get them tackled out there in, you know, in the flat, that's what Georgia Tech did as right. well to give them a chance to win that game. And, and I think when, when you say high on them, it was almost the, the deal where when, when Devin went down, I expected him to be the next guy up, and right. it was like he was nowhere to be found. So not sure if there were some lingering injuries that he was dealing with, but now that he's back, no question the best option available right now. Yeah, and there's some continuity there, right? I mean, you've seen him been play, done that. So you yeah. know what to expect. I mean, if you're going to be in a position, clearly they feel like Finley is the guy. Let's switch sides here to the defense. And the pack, led by an ACC Defensive Player of the Year candidate, Drake Thomas, and linebacker. He's part of a defense that is second among league squads in scoring defense and fourth in total defense. So expectations for a pack defense, EJ, going up against a legitimate Heisman contender who played his worst game of the season a week ago in Drake May. Is this almost advantage pack defense today? It's not an advantage. I would say it's equal for both teams. As far as this defense, though, I go back to when NC State played against Wake Forest, played against another very good quarterback in Sam Hartman, and they were able to kind of distract him in his, in his eyes and his reads uh, with some of their zones. And I, I know Sam, Sam Hartman was throwing across his body. There was defenders and linebackers coming the opposite way, getting interceptions. So hopefully they're able to do that again today. I also would press some of these receivers from North Carolina and slow down the route mm -hmm. concepts. If you can do that a little bit, 
mixed in with your, your front three because they play a three-man front to get after the quarterback. You can do that with Preston, and then the front three have a chance to get to the quarterback. It should help. Them. And going back to that matchup you talk about as a legitimate favor for the pack, I think it might even be the opposite, worst-case worst scenario case, to where worse. those guys want to play at such a high level. The, the play callers want to call a better game. Guys that are <coughs> injured are now playing. And so, you know, just being a, an offensive lineman, I knew if I had a bad series or a bad game, that next week, man, you were coming back. I, I got to prove myself. I got to protect my guy. I'm sure as a quarterback, it's a whole nother level. So it's going to be fascinating to see just that mental aspect. You asked that early in the show. I thought that was a, a really intriguing piece. Who is going to be able to overcome the deficits they've recently Well, let me, let, me, let me recycle that, too. Who's best suited to do so? Because you've got a pack team. <laughs> That's the older group, right? right. Jason, wouldn't yeah. you expect them to be the bounce-back group here? Well, North Carolina's better suited. I mean, they have a better offense. I mean, Drake May is still their quarterback. Drake May still made plays to win that football game. And I hate to say it, but despite Josh Downs dropping that touchdown pass, they win that ball game against Georgia Tech. So uh, I think the, the narrative about Drake May, about – Carolina is completely different if they do win it. Uh, so as far as who's better suited to come out here and play better today, is QB1, Drake May's offense. Well, I know the Heels don't want to revisit last week, but it's our job here. So uh, what might be the best way to slow down Drake May and the Heels going forward? Well, if you look, blitzing worked out well for Georgia Tech. May faced the blitz on a season high. 54% of his dropbacks and completed just 53% of them. Just a fraction above his season low, 53% completion percentage in the week four home loss to Notre Dame. Emac, show us what went wrong for the Heels offensively six sleeps ago. Yeah, Jay, I love that you put it that way because we show the graphic of Drake May, but it truly was everybody. It was offensive line. It was wide receivers. It was running backs, quarterback. Of course, they get most of the blame. But let's start with the offensive line right here. What we're staring at from a defensive perspective, this is bare. We got one, two, three, four, five guys <coughs> on that defensive line. I know it's not traditional bear where there's three techniques and guards are coming up, but as an offensive line unit, I'm going bear, bear, bear. And what does that mean? We're going to have those five guys. We're just going to sort them out to where we have those five, and then the running back is going to do his thing right here where he cleans it up. He makes us right. He's going to fill in the gaps where he can have the roof here, or if there's a little bit of leakage, he can help and do that. Now what you're going to see right away is the right guard is sliding. So he's telling me that he's thinking we're on the slide side. These are the two guys that we're responsible for when you look at right here on this edge. Both of these guys, we have to be able to take care of that business, but then his eyes go inside. So I'm not sure where the miscommunication was there where he's just going to allow somebody to come straight through Sack Drake May, that was a third down. That was an instrumental play call. Okay, so that's one for the offensive line. Now what we're going to see is a defensive lineman right here. I call that a werewolf, EJ. You and I talk about this all the time. These guys are nasty. They're defensive ends. They're rush specialists. They get after the quarterback. Where are we on the field right here? We're in the red zone. Everything is sped up. Everything moves so much quicker. So instead, what North Carolina is going to do is they're going to try to have a back block here tight end go across the entire line of scrimmage to a guy that, what does he see? I see ball down. I'm hunting. I'm going after that quarterback. I'm not worried about anything else because there's no room. There's nothing else that can be presented right here where instead, if we would have just locked it, if my right tackle would have just said, hey, lock, 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 I'm gathering this guy. I'm taking my time because this action with Josh Downs, it happens so fast. The fake is irrelevant. He's going to be screaming wide open as soon as he comes out here because of all this trash that we're going to see from the top receiver. There's no need for that to happen. And what are you going to see? Fourth down and two. Quarterback has a scramble. Ball's in his left hand. There's no opportunities. That's a sack. That's on a tight end. That's on a quarterback not getting the ball out quickly. So now let's see it again. This is going to be the interception. What we're going to have here is a wide receiver going in motion. And this is such a thing where it's almost like if this didn't happen, the play wouldn't happen. He's in man-to-man. -man. Ball gets snapped. Drake sees that right away. He sees the motion. And so what is he thinking? Okay, I've got man-to-man -man across the board. I've got a baller tight end that he's going to run this little route right here, this corner route. It's man. I can throw it flat. I know that he's going to break out. I know that he's going to see that. But what he, Drake doesn't see, this guy's screaming across the formation. It is such a random thing to where Drake palms the ball a little bit. That guy's able to make the play. He should never have been in the play in the first place. And now this last one again to put it back on a wide receiver. Josh Downs runs an amazing route. Wide open to win the game. This is the Heisman moment. Come on. He turns around mm. right at the wrong time. Doesn't look that ball all the way in, guys. And so <laughs> that's when I say it's, it's uncharacteristic. It was this perfect storm of... WTF, what is happening? What is going on right now? And that's, I just don't think we'll see that again 
from UNC. Yeah, and I guess that's an interesting way of looking at it is it's not just Drake May. And right. also, furthermore than that, EJ, Josh, Down catch, Josh Downs catches that football and everything's Over. still intact. Yeah. I mean, we're not looking at this team in the regard that we are. All smiles because we're covering rivalry week to close out the season. Speaking of those rivals, Cedric Gray getting ready. 127 tackles on the season, the most in the conference, third most in all of Bad college boy. football. The defense ready to do their part. All eyes on Drake May and that offense. 11 minutes away from kickoff. We take you right up to it. Remember, that's on ABC, y'all. Welcome back into the ACC huddle. North Carolina following a loss in the last three seasons. Uh, pretty darn good. 9-1 is Coach Mack Brown, second best in the ACC over that span. Only team better, clubs in a smaller sample size of 5-0. and oh. uh, Let's consider the headspace of Josh Downs. That brutal drop last week arguably cost them the game. What's he thinking today? EJ? Move on, move on, move on. You can't let one play cost you for the next game. Josh Downs has had a tremendous season, doing an excellent job moving around with Josh Downs too. Whether he's in the backfield, whether he's in the slot, whether he's outside, he's going to have a huge game tonight against the Wolfpack. He, he's got to be a guy, EJ, that just, like you said, moves on because he is everything for this team. He's the security blanket. He's the go-to guy. When things break down, when things happen, that's where you know we see Drake look at and, and he's going to find his guy. He's going to try to get it to him. But who he's going to be going against is this bad boy right here. Drake Defensive Thomas. Defensive player of the year candidate. Man, he's up there. Yeah, he's yeah. absolutely up there. And I, I think that that's what's going to be so hard about that boat just because there is so many guys you can <coughs> choose from. This guy flies around, hits you in the backfield, go out in coverage, try to get the football. He's the football player. When you envision this is what I want my guy to look like. That's it right there. Flies around, has no you know, resolve of his body. He's going to sacrifice everything trying to make a tackle. We talk quarterbacks a lot on this show, rightfully so, mm -hmm. ACC yeah. conference quarterbacks. Loaded. But I would say linebacker-wise, Cedric Gray and Drake Thomas, two of the best in the country, not just in yeah. this conference, two of the best. So that's a key to be watching this game too. Carolina's defense, we're talking about in this one as well because they could go out there, complimentary football, and maybe win this game themselves and not have to just be the Drake May story. What's Carolina's defense's focus coming into this game, knowing that, that you know, they're facing a, a guy who hasn't played much in Finley? They, they have to step up. I mean, this is a unit that a week ago, Georgia Tech had the ball with four and a half minutes. I was like, surely there's going to be a stop. Absolutely, this North Carolina defense is going to get us the ball back. Drake's going to have his Heisman finalist, his Heisman moment. It's all good. They couldn't. They could not stop anything that Georgia Tech was trying to do. With, with an NC State offense, EJ, that is so hurt, that is struggling, that identity at times, do they run the ball, do they pass the ball, what do they want to do? You have to be better than what you've been all year. Yeah, well, also, North Carolina's defense needs to respect Finley. If he's going to be the starting quarterback, I felt like they didn't <coughs> respect Zach Gibson. They brought yeah. some pressures sure. where they said, hey, we're going to all out this guy, force him to throw an interception, force him to get rid of the football. Zach Gibson had a plan. He mm -hmm. dropped back, threw out a flat Patient, route to yeah. Hassan Hall, Caught the ball, got a first down. I think it was on fourth down situation in that four-minute drill. So I would say defensively, have some respect for this quarterback. Don't just throw out a bunch of blitzes expecting this guy to be rattled. You expect UNC with how flat they came out, EJ, last week versus Georgia Tech, how stalled they were. Two of 11 drives resulted in no points. Something uncharacteristic of Carolina. You expect them to be aggressive in a play call early on. I expect them to be how they've been all season. And whether that's aggressive, whether that's conservative in the sense of how Coach Longo calls plays that phase up to whatever the defense is throwing at him, I can't see Carolina all of a sudden getting out of, out of you know, sorts and say, hey, we got to start doing this. Nah, just play your game. Let Drake May let the game come to him. It's time to play the game. UNC, NC State over on ABC. Enjoy. We'll see you tomorrow. Audience, our next game's gonna be a good one. Dave Dern, Mac Brown talking North Carolina. North Carolina State less than 14 minutes away and reminding you also uh, another rivalry that's going on between Texas and Baylor. Reminding you, of course, coming up, Drake May under five minutes to go. North Carolina, NC State. This game in Chapel Hill on ABC. Great rivalry matchup. Carolina coming off that stunning loss to Georgia Tech. Well, thank you so much. We are minutes away. Thayer Thomas a year ago, four catches and a touchdown in that comeback victory over North Carolina. We got the rematch, the rivalry. NC State, UNC coming up after this. This is ESPN on ABC.
Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Arby's. From Chapel Hill, North Carolina, you're watching the ACC on ESPN. 9-2 North Carolina set to play in the ACC championship game a week from today. Takes on rival North Carolina State at Keenan Stadium on Black Friday. And hi, everybody. Dave Pash with Dusty Dvorak in the booth. Tom Lugan built down on the field. Well, the Tar Heels, Dusty, had a chance at the college football playoff, but that went away last week with a loss. Still a lot to play for. Obviously, the ACC championship game next week, a chance to beat your rival and also showcase one of the best players in college football today. No question to win 10 games, as Mac Brown told us, a big deal. First time North Carolina's won the Coastal since 2015, and you mentioned it which Drake May has been nothing short of sensational. But NC State's got their own Drake, and it's Drake Thomas. I think he's the best defensive player the ACC has had all year. Very good chance. we got the ACC Offensive Player of the Year and the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. That matchup, this Carolina offense against this Wolfpack defense, is going to be outstanding all afternoon. And Dave Dorn did some talking when we spoke to him this week. He said, we're blue collar. They act as if they are elitist. They're their coaches talk down to us. It's all about rivalry weekend as North Carolina. George Petaway signaling for the fair catch. will come out to the 25 with North Carolina State winning the toss and electing to defer. Here are the numbers for Drake May. Leads the country in total offense. No touchdown passes last week for the first time all season through his first pick in six games, was sacked six times. Head coach Mack Brown said three of those six sacks were on him, trying to force things, holding onto the ball too long. They lost at home here against Georgia Tech, but still, May with a great chance to at least be invited to New York City and the Heisman Trophy ceremony. No question in two huge stages here today, next week in the ACC title, the best defenses you have seen all year. He'll throw on first down from the 25, and it's caught and then dropped at the last second by Downs. So this is really interesting. Josh Downs, before last week, had one drop all season. He had a huge drop on fourth down that might have won the game last week, and he just dropped the ball here on first down. And you know they're going to continue to go to him. He's one of the most targeted receivers in all of college football. Excellent route runner, typically great hands and a very tough guy to cover. Interesting, they went to him on that first play to try to get his confidence back up, perhaps. Gain of about five for Elijah Green. Let's bring in Tom from the field. Well, guys, Dave, you referenced uh, the stubbed toe of North Carolina's offense a week ago with Drake May, and how do you get back on track? You know what you do? You take what the defense gives you. We became so accustomed to seeing this offense make it look easy, and you realize it's not easy. So when things don't go well, you start to press, you start to get frustrated. They got to get back to the fundamentals. If the shot's there, take it. If it's not, Dock it down. May takes off here, still keeping the play alive to throw it, tried to dump it off to Downs, and it was broken up that time by Aiden White. So North Carolina with a three and out on its first possession. Well, it's really good coverage down the field. Drake May really nowhere to go with the football. He thought about running it. Excellent pursuit by the nose tackle, 48, Corey Durden. And you see Peyton Wilson. Good to have him back for this Wolfpack defense. But it's a drop eight. Good coverage all over the field. And the rally to Drake May trying to be mobile. Very well done by Tony Gibson's defense on that opening possession. Ben Kieran to punt for UNC. They have two return men, Thayer Thomas and Jaden Coit back for NC State, and this will be Thomas able to slip a tackle and up to about the 33-yard line. So we know that Drake May is the quarterback for North Carolina and one of the best in the country. We did not know until right now who the quarterback would be to start this game for NC State. It happens to be the fourth different starting quarterback this year. Devin Leary started the season, was having a great year. Torres Peck against Florida State. He's out for the season. Then M.J. Morris, a true freshman, he started but got hurt a couple weeks ago. So last week they started Jack Chambers. This week they're starting Ben Finley, younger brother of Ryan Finley, who was a great player, three-year starter here for NC State. Ben Finley gave him a spark last week and really throw the football. They'll run it on first down. Jordan Houston trying to get the edge past the 40. Knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. So that's a gain of 11 on North Carolina State's first play. This is going to be the real key throughout the course of this ball game. NC State running the football on this Carolina Tar Heel defense. And early in the season, they really struggled to stop the run. Felt like they've gotten better throughout the course of the season. But it's going to be very clear. NC State's ability to win this football game is going to be very reliant 
reliant on their ability to run the ball effectively. Ben Finley actually played in Chapel Hill for NC State two years ago through a touchdown pass in that game. And wide open is Devin Carter down the sideline, stiff arming the defender and dragged down inside the five by Geo Biggers. And there's a penalty flag down because of that tackle. 52-yard pass play at NC State set up inside the five. Boy, Devin Carter had to miss a week ago. Great to have him back. Big target outside. And the corner to the boundary, Storm Duck. He's just going to fall on the ground. As contact's created here by Devin Carter, he goes down. Wide open Devin Carter and an easy find for Finley. And it, Force call and tackle. Call tackle. Defense. Defense. At penalty, we have to the end of the round. Half the distance to the goal. First down. What a hot start here for NC State. First with the defense. And the second play, they hit the explosive. And Storm Duck had really been playing some great football heading into this game the last several weeks. Weeks, We take a look at Biggers. It's that hand inside. It's a good call by the official. But again, just half the distance to the goal, so kind of uh, to the goal, kind of inconsequential. Jack Chambers is in now at quarterback. He's out there to run the ball, and that's why he's into the end zone for the touchdown. It's his 42nd carry of the season, his first rushing score. Great start for the Wolfpack. Well, this is what Jack Chambers brings, the running element. Just going to be an outside stretch. 54, Dylan McMahon playing center right now. Nice job. And 53, Derek East in the right guard spot. Excellent job getting that movement, getting that push. And a good cut by Chambers into the end zone. Christopher Dunn, who hasn't missed a single kick all season, puts it through. And NC State unranked for the first time at one point this year. They were in the top ten. Great start here on the road. Football on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. Welcome back to Chapel Hill. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville. On a gorgeous day, we thought it was going to rain for most of the day, but sunny skies, temperature in the low 60s. And North Carolina, after blowing a 17-0 lead and a loss to Georgia Tech last week, trails 7-0, opening two minutes of the game. Here's Petaway returning this one past the 20 and wrapped up, thrown down at the 25. Well, it's a fabulous matchup we have in our hands today. As good as there is in the ACC offensively in North Carolina, and I think it's the best defense consistently in the ACC for NC State. When you think about this team and what they've dealt with offensively in their struggles, they are so defensive dependent. They're healthy right now. And boy, it is going to be a battle. It should be ongoing all throughout the course of this ball game. Tony Gibson did not mix words. He said, we got to rattle that young quarterback, and we've got to do a good job affecting him and keeping him uncomfortable all throughout the course of this game. Man, first down from the 25. Will throw it, and it's behind. J.J. Jones incomplete. Rare misfire from May. Not surprised that NC State has come out with this kind of intensity and physicality after a conversation with Dave Doran. We already touched on some of the comments he made about North Carolina and comparing the two schools. Talking about you know, May also saying, you know, hey, May, the comments that he made saying that people that can't get an NC State go to North Carolina. He feels that that came from the coaches, although a chance it came from his family, considering they all went to North Carolina. <laughs> May, out of the backfield, completes it to Josh Downs, but a short gain will bring a third down and long. So here's what May said back in September. Now, he apologized for this. He said, look, I shouldn't have said it. It was inappropriate timing. But he said, whether you want to admit it or not, grow up in Carolina, people go to NC State because they can't get in to Carolina. But Drake's dad, Mark, former quarterback in North Carolina, brother Luke, national championship basketball player, has a brother currently on the UNC basketball team, Bo May. And Drake to the air here in third down, not on the same page again. This time with Downs, fourth down, another three and out. That's two three and outs for UNC. When Drake May is just off here early on this ball game, Tony Gibson dials it up once again. Pressure coming off the edge, and Drake May wants to get the football out of his hand quickly and just completely misfires. Looked like he thought Downs was going to break out. Downs continued to work inside. And two quick three and outs here for this highly potent Carolina Tar Heel offense. 
Kiernan to punt for the second time in two and a half minutes. Thomas backing up, field to the 29. And good tackle at the 32-yard line. Brought down by Dontavius Nash. So here comes NC State's offense, which just went down the field pretty easily on the first drive. And it will be Ben Finley who started the game. Played in three games last year, and again two years ago, played here in Chapel Hill because of injuries, had two picks in that game, did throw a touchdown pass, NC State lost. Going to keep it on the ground, Michael Allen, who's become the go-to running back lately, but nowhere to go that time. Brought down after a gain of about a yard by Don Chapman. Allen, 28 carries in the last three games, just 10 the entire season before that. I like him, Dave, this true freshman, and he is tough to tackle, thick build, got some burst to him, and see some really good vision on tape had a nice touchdown catch last week as well I expect his role to continue to grow through the remainder of this season in the next year not going to redshirt him this is his fifth game so they said let's just play him and give him the ball Finley with time he's going to go to a lot of the backfield but just over his head good coverage too by Cedric Gray the linebacker for North Carolina who's from Charlotte and their leading tackler third down it's man-to-man -man coverage. You mentioned it, Dave, and a good job by Gray working over the top, able to get on that wheel route just enough as that ball is slightly overthrown from Finley, but good coverage down the field by Cedric Gray. If Finley had that one to do again, I think he'd put some air under that ball. Yeah, it was a low throw, Tom. It came and Rucker came offside. There was contact, so they blow it dead, but it did not look like Rucker was drawn Outside. off. Defense from the 25. It's interesting watching North Carolina. You wonder, is there a little bit of a hangover from the loss last week? We talked with Mac Brown. He said, look, I warned him. I warned him going into the game, don't overlook Georgia Tech. And they got up 17-0. They thought they had it. And it was a tough pill to swallow. Looks like they're slow to respond from that loss. Scored on the first play last week. Went on cruise control a little bit. They wound up with an L. Kind of sleepwalking to start this game. Trying to get off the field here. Just... Gave NC State five yards and giving Finley time to throw, but everybody covered. Now Finley downfield. Knocked away at the last second by Storm Duck. Carter, the intended receiver. Fourth down. NC State will punt. Well, the coverage is fantastic down the field. And good job by Finley buying some time, rolling to his right. No pressure. But then Storm Duck's going to come in here late, get this ball out with his, with his right hand. Outstanding job as Carter has the ball, but Duck comes in and gets a big stop for this Carolina defense. Noon Kester to punt for NC State. Josh Downs is deep. Has a 38-yard punt return this year. A lot of times they kick it away from him. Got a potential first or second round draft pick ahead of him. And fair caught at the 29. 7-0 NC State. Well, Drake May leads all of college football in total offense, third and passing touchdown. Take a look at what he does so well. His ability to work within the pocket. You see a five-man pressure, pressure off the edge. No panic, step up, locate your target down the field. That's a crucial juncture against Wake Forest. How about a Miami? Get off balance, no matter what, under pressure, falling away, still finds a way to get the ball to Josh Downs. Looked like Patrick Mahomes on that particular play. And when the game's on the line, no one better than 10 for North Carolina with the ball in their hands. Feels the pressure off the edge, moves to his right, excellent with his mobility, and finds Antoine Green in the front pylon for the game-winning touchdown. Really is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the country. Off to a slow start here against a very good NC State defense. Yeah, one for five. Mac Brown was pretty confident, though, that Drake would bounce back from last week's showing as he hits J.J. Jones out past the 25 to the 27 yard line. North Carolina trying to get its 10th win of the season. They've had only one 10 win season in the last 25 years. That was back in 2015, the last time they played in the ACC title game. 
They'll face Clemson a week from tomorrow for the ACC championship. Elijah Green stumbles, trying to run to the right. C.J. Clark and that outstanding top 10 run defense for NC State get him to the ground, so bring up third down. Yeah, this NC State front seven really is fantastic. Defensive line's been playing great. Corey Durden, Davin, Van, and then, man, Drake Thomas is good linebackers you'll see in college football. Carolina trying to get its initial first down of the game. And May's pass over the middle is pulled in by Nesbitt, the tight end. And that will move the sticks out to the 31. Boy, Tom, one thing we're seeing, that ball's coming out quick. A lot of quick game here. You can tell anticipating a lot of pressure from this NC State defense. No question. And if you also notice, the NC State secondary is playing within four to five yards of the line of scrimmage. So the windows that Drake May is throwing into, very, very tight. He's going to have to be ultra accurate here today. Nesbitt just left, a little banged up. After making that catch his 28th of the season. May in the pocket, throws a deep ball, got single coverage, and it's almost pulled in. Flags are down. Did he make that catch and get a foot down? It didn't look like it. They're he saying he caught it. Receiver. Yeah, they're going to say he did. Wow. Unbelievable concentration. We'll see if it stands, if he was able to keep that foot in bounds, but Antoine Green. Excellent tracking the football. Clearly interference there by Aiden White. Get that. No, that's no, no, not a catch. Not a catch. Surprise is taking that long to, to yeah. make a ruling on the field. Okay. Ruling on the field is a completed catch. And first down no. for North Carolina. Pass interference is defense number three. The penalties because the previous plays in the third year. So this will get overturned. It will be a 15-yard penalty. I tell you what, just having Antoine Green back, he's been in and out of the lineup, broke his collarbone in fall camp. Once they got him back and there's a true second threat to Josh Downs, they become such a potent offense. We'll be back after this review. ESPN College Football is presented by Arby's. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville in Chapel Hill. Replay overturned the ruling on the field. It took all of about one look them to change it but penalty is in force so it's a first down on the 46 of North Carolina and a run play Elijah Green crossing midfield getting about five yards seven touchdowns on the year for Elijah Green all of those in the last five games he's really burst onto the scene early in the year is running back by committee and then Phil Longo said you know what we're not doing this anymore and Elijah Green started fourth on the depth chart and he's worked his way up and he's been an outstanding addition to the backfield for the Tar Heels. Sophomore from Georgia. In the backfield on second and five, he'll get it again, this time running left. And he's knocked down after a gain of one by Tanner Ingle. First team all ECC safety a year ago. Third down coming up. Tanner Ingle, violence downhill. You see also Drake Thomas, nice job getting off the block. They constrict everything so much along this front. Third down situation, typically where we see Josh Downs have his number called. Inside receiver up to that trip side. May, pretty good athlete, going to take off here and able to get the first down. Sticking the ball out, lunging before he's hit out of bounds by Peyton Wilson. Well, as you mentioned, he's such a good athlete. If it's not there, this is the next element of the offense you have to deal with as a defender. Always looking to run. There's some design quarterback draw within this offense, but if there's nothing there down the field and there's an opening or he can get to the edge, he's going to take advantage over 600 yards on the ground now for the redshirt freshman quarterback. And every coach you talk to, Dusty, says he's so much faster than you think he is until you see him in person. He needs a lot of ground with that stride, Tom. He'll throw it here. Nope. Going to take off. And it would look like a design quarterback run. Doesn't get much. Brought down by Corey Durden. I think now with the year, and I remember you said it, we had them against Miami early on in the season. You said this guy's going to be an NFL quarterback. And now it feels like the scouts are starting to catch up to him a little bit. Words getting out. Again, scouts are usually looking at juniors and seniors at this point. This guy's a redshirt freshman, but safe to say within the next two years he's going to be in the NFL. He's got a little bit of everything, man. I mean, accuracy, anticipation, playmaking ability, making throws from the pocket, off schedule, you name it, and the tape shows that Drake May can do it. Second down and nine, Elijah Green up the middle. 
And close to a first down, about a yard short. It'll be third down for May, who leads the team in rushing, by the way. He's over 600 rushing yards on the season and averaging over 300 passing yards a game. Only Johnny Menzel and Patrick Mahomes have done that as Green's able to get the first down there for North Carolina. But that gives you just a little snapshot of Drake May and what he's accomplished this year as a redshirt freshman. Only three guys to do that over the last 15 years. Manziel, one of Heisman, and Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks in football. I like seeing North Carolina start to run the football a little bit more on this drive. A couple of nice runs from Elijah Green and a quality pickup there on third down. First lengthy drive for either team. A lot happened in the first five minutes with possession changes as May throws into traffic and it's pulled in by J.J. Jones. Gain of about seven. Yeah, they may look at that. I think that ball hit the ground. Well, the center, Corey Gaynor, is like, let's get up here and snap it quickly. Guys, he dropped that ball. Yeah, standing right on the sideline yeah. here. I thought so too, Tom. Good call. The ball is going to hit him. It's a really good coverage on the outside by Battle. Boy, again, that. Boy, on yeah. the field's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down at the previous yeah. spot. This is. Uh, if Please set the game clock to six minutes, 43 seconds. Six, four, three. Thank you. It's got to be a little concerning. There are two calls. You're looking at the replay easily. I mean, not even close to being a catch. We're called catches on the field. Another pass that could have been caught. It's really well defended by Shaheen Battle on the outside. Again, tight windows, right, Dusty? Everything's yep. contested, Tom. Yep. Very tight coverage out there for North Carolina State. Another give to Green, a lot of running room straight ahead. You don't see many teams get that kind of push against that NC State front. It's a first down for the Tar Heels. Well, it's a good job by the right tackle, Spencer Rollin, an excellent cutback. See, Drake Thomas gets up the field, the cutback lanes there. Elijah Green really starting to establish himself here on this drive. Already seven carries on the day. Elijah Green at 69 all season coming in. And again, a bulk of those in the last month. In the red zone now, May fires. And again, it hits the ground incomplete. Going for J.J. Jones. This ball needs to be caught by J.J. Jones. Again, hits him right in the hands. Was that three potential drops we've seen already here in this first quarter? Yep. Two from Jones, one from Downs. And this, again, for Drake May. How does he handle this when your playmakers start putting the ball on the ground? Do you get frustrated? They couldn't score last week against Georgia Tech and had trouble with drops. May on the move on second down. And it's caught, but not a lot of room for Copenhaver. So he stepped out, did get positive yardage, but only a gain of a yard. Third down and nine. For the most part this season, Carolina's been great in the red zone. Last week was not the case whatsoever. Really struggled as one of the key reasons they weren't able to get that victory. Here they are, first time this afternoon inside the red zone. Third and long situation. Josh Downs, Antoine Green. Typically the way Drake May's looking in these spots. Getting a check from the sideline from Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator. Preston up top. May, everybody covered. Moving to his right, now throws into the end zone, and it's over the head of Downs. Fourth down, and North Carolina will bring on the field goal unit. A drop eight here by NC State. They don't bring pressure, and everybody's covered. Nowhere to go. It was a double team over on Antoine Green into the boundary. Nice job with Josh Downs. He starts to kind of come open. Drake May tries to find him, but just a little bit too much to find Josh Downs in the back of the end zone. Really good tight coverage down the field by NC State in the red zone. So Nora Burnett, about 36 yards here. And Carolina is on the board. 7-3, NC State. Coming up tonight on ABC, it's Florida and Florida State. 
And then a big game tomorrow, not just for USC, but for the Pac-12, which is only a two teams all time in the college football playoff. And they've got a top 15 team that's playing really well right now in Notre Dame coming to their house. No question. Took Coach Freeman a little bit in his first year as a head coach, but they have really found their stride playing a physical brand of football. Drew Pine has settled in, and with Caleb Williams, as good as there is in college football this year, he is the reason USC will be playing for a Pac-12 title while USC's got a legitimate chance for the college football playoff. And I'll tell you, I'm excited about tonight's matchup. We saw Florida State earlier this season. You can tell Mike Morvell is turning things in the right direction. That's always a great matchup, Florida, Florida State. But I think the Knowles' ability to run the football is going to be a little bit too much for the Gators to deal with tonight. Back to Caleb Williams. Front runner right now for the Heisman. I'd have the number one. I don't see how anybody, I mean, look, Stroud's had a great year. Forms had a great year. Heck, Drake May in the conversation here the last few weeks. But Caleb Williams got to be sitting at the top spot for me. Burnett kicking it off to Gray. Goes into the end zone for a touchback. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. We've had a chance to see some of them on display already throughout the course of this ball game for Carolina. Cedric Gray defensively, he has been a tackling machine. Number three in all of college football in tackles. And Josh Downs, one of the best receivers you'll see in the country. And how about the Thomas brothers? Thayer Thomas, haven't talked much about him. Unbelievably productive wide receiver. And Drake Thomas, I think as good as there is as linebackers in the ACC, one of the absolute best in all of college football. I think Thayer Thomas, the guy they need to get the ball to throughout the course of this game. He wasn't targeted much a week ago in the loss to Louisville. He's got 51 catches on the season coming in. Finley running a little option, pitching it to Jordan Houston, and he loses a couple of yards. Just stumbled and fell. Back at the 23-yard line. Turf Monster took him down here on the field. Jordan Houston getting on the perimeter as he tries to cut and get upfield, go straight to the ground. Good pursuit there by North Carolina, but old Willie White line, Dusty. Old Willie White line. I hate it when he gets me to town. Ben Finley is still in the game. We've only seen Jack Chambers in there for that one play. It was the rushing touchdown. Otherwise, it's been Finley, a quarterback for NC State. Throwing it here and out of the backfield, Houston. Good tackle that time by Rucker along the sideline in front of the NC State bench. Pickup of about four or five. Well, you see the screen right there to the wide side of the field. You knew this was going to be a big part of what NC State wanted to do today. That's exactly what North Carolina struggled with a week ago. But 25 came in Rucker. This is an outstanding job. He fights through two blocks and makes an excellent tackle on the sidelines. If he doesn't make that play, there's a lot of grass and blockers out in front for Houston. Richard freshman from Phoenix, Ben Finley. See what he does here in third down and six. The fourth different starting quarterback for NC State this season because of injury. And he had to check it down because of good coverage downfield to Daryl Jones, but well short of the line to gain. And so NC State will have to punt. 348 remaining here in the first quarter. Carolina offensive coordinator Gene Chizik, he elects to drop eight. Simple zone coverage, covering everything up underneath, giving that young quarterback a lot to look at. All those bodies moving around. He couldn't find anybody open. And the Tar Heels off the field here once again. Noonkester to punt. And Downs is deep for UNC. 112th meeting between these two schools. About 25 miles separate the campuses. Raleigh and Chapel Hill. Downs getting out of the way. Now on one hop, I think he signaled for a fair catch. And that's what the official's saying anyway. So it's dead right where he touched the 19 yard line. Now a quick word from Cheese It. Say cheese. I'll still cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Crop yourself out. My hair does look amazing. Cheese It. Feeling the cheesiest. So 7-3 NC State leads. Talked about the injuries at quarterback. There have been a lot of injuries on the defense for the Wolfpack, and we're being told that Isaiah Moore, who is a three-time captain, fifth-year starter, he got banged up earlier and may not return now. Tony Gibson called him a coach on the field. Called him his co-defensive coordinator. So Devon Betty been seeing a lot of the action here these last couple series. 
The pressure coming from the field. That's Downs in motion. And in trouble. May sack back at the 10 yard line by Drake Thomas. Leads the ACC in tackles for a loss. Boy, when he gets his hands on you, you're going to the ground. Just plays with violence and excellent off the edge here. Unaccounted for. Drake May's got to get rid of that football. You're not going to shake a tackle from Drake Thomas. Tony Gibson bringing him off the edge from the field. And nice negative play created by the junior linebacker. Looked hesitant to swing that ball out to Josh Downs. May on the move again. And gets positive yardage. Pushed out around the 14-yard line by Drake Thomas again. So third down on about 15 coming up. There's nowhere to go with the football for Drake May. Just a three-receiver out there, fully covered down the field. They're dedicating a lot of bodies to coverage here today, Tom. It's given Drake May all kinds of issues trying to find any open targets. They are, and again, squatting down. They're kind of anticipating the underneath shorter route, so there's no windows to throw the ball into. Some movement by North Carolina as NC State started to shift on defense. False start. False start. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty, third down. Zed Montalus, the left guard. Look, this is an offense that has been humming all season long. Still in a funk going back to the middle of the game last week. Yeah, held scoreless in the second half against Georgia Tech and well, NC State giving them all kinds of fits here early. Top 10 in total offense coming into this game. Here's a dump off on third down and long to DJ Jones just to give some space for the punter. As we're closing in on a minute to go here in the opening quarter. There's nothing down the field open. It's a really good job from Peyton Wilson in pursuit to the football and then Drake Thomas right there to get Jones on the ground. A nice sequence right there for Drake Thomas in the NC State defense, Tom. Yeah, and Dusty, I'll tell you what, NC State will take this all day long. If that's what you're going to do, Drake May, if that's what you're going to do, North Carolina, by all means, we're going to come up and tackle, and now you're going to get field position. Although, who could blame him after the penalties and the sack being third down and forever? Kiernan's punt goes out of bounds. NC State's going to have the ball near midfield, and there's an injured Tar Heel at the 41. We'll clean that up in a second. Take a look at this week's college football playoff Turn rankings on the field brought to you by player. Capital One. Georgia Tech has played a lot better lately, but boy, to have to go to Athens and knock off the number one team in the country, that is quite the challenge. Michigan, Ohio State, who do you got in that game? I got Ohio State, but I think it's going to be close. How healthy is Blake Corum? Can Ohio State stop the Michigan rushing attack? Big key in that ball game. Meanwhile, the injured player was the long snapper, Drew Little for North Carolina. Clemson, South Carolina, ABC Noon, Oregon and Oregon State, 3.30, ABC. Good ones, man. Not only the rivalries, all the passion of college football. This weekend brings amazing, great scene last night in Oxford at the Egg Bowl. But, man, a lot of conference championship and college football playoff implications on the line this weekend. So you look at that first drive, and again, there was a, a defender that fell down for North Carolina, which really was the reason for that big play. Here's a little trickery, the hook and lateral to Michael Allen. It's read beautifully by North Carolina. DeAndre Boykins with the takedown and a loss of one. It's just a fantastic play by DeAndre Boykins. Stays home, comes down, makes an excellent play on the hook and lateral, as you mentioned. Well executed, Allen there on the... Perimeter, chopped down by the star position for North Carolina and Boykins. Sophomore from Concord, North Carolina. Got an interception, couple of sacks on the season, so he's made some plays. They're gonna run the ball here to Michael Allen. And again, a good open field stop. Cameron Kelly at the 48-yard line, so a gain of about 4-5, third down coming up for NC State when we start the second quarter. And that's the end of the Wolf first quarter. With a 7-3 lead after one here in Chapel Hill. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You provide the opportunity.
tomorrow over on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Wake Forest takes on Duke. That's at 3.30 Eastern time. Then at 8 Eastern, it's Pitt and Miami. Start of the second quarter here in Chapel Hill. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville. 7-3, NC State leading North Carolina in this rivalry game on Black Friday. Pass over the middle is caught by Keon Lassane. Fumbled the ball. Got it back, though, after he got the first down of the 43. Nice find on third down by Ben Finley. This time Gene Chizik brings a little pressure from the field. Finley stands in there strong, locates his open target. Jump by Gray getting this ball out, but Sane able to wrestle that ball away from Biggers and chains move. Allen stumbles. We've seen that twice. Earlier it was Jordan Houston, now it's Michael Allen losing a yard, just tripping on the turf. It's not raining. It was earlier this morning, but you'd have to think that uh, it's not slick down there on the field. Beautiful afternoon and evening here in Chapel Hill, a picturesque setting here from the booth. How gorgeous is this campus and this view from this booth, Dave? Oh, it's as good as it gets, Chapel Hill. One of those beautiful campuses in the country. Men's basketball team number one in the country playing out in Portland right now. Lassane inside the 40 and down to about the 37 for a gain of seven on the play. Bring up third down. You saw their storm duck as he plant drive on the football, lost his leverage. A nice move after the catch by Lassane to pick up a couple extra yards. Get this third and very manageable. Here Thomas. Inside receiver to the field. Hasn't been targeted much here so far in this ball game. Well, he is a reliable, strong-handed wide receiver for the Wolfpack. Finley off of a short set, and he's got him. Thayer Thomas comes free, and it's a first down inside the 30. Out of bounds at the 28 for a gain of nine. Just a quick out, and they got the matchup they wanted. They got Thayer Thomas in that inside position working on Power Eccles, the linebacker. Easy pitch and catch for Ben Finley. Doing a nice job running this offense here early in the ball game, and two really quality throws here to pick up back-to-back -back third down conversions. And he's not taking any risk with the football yet. He's being smart, Tom. Take what they give him. Seven of nine, 83 yards. Play fake here. Finley setting up, going into the end zone, and it's caught. A touchdown. Terrell Thomas, just his third catch all season. Terrell Timmons with the TD. Only his third catch, the true freshman. There's an injured Tar Heel down as well in the end zone. It's like Cameron Kelly, the safety grabbing his hamstring. Take a look at this play. As we take a look at Timmons, gonna work out of the inside. He's gonna run a post route, and you'll see Chapman, the safety, eyes in the backfield, freezes just long enough, and by the time he recognizes the post coming, it's too late. An absolute dime here by the freshman Ben Finley to true freshman Timmons. Huge throw and huge touchdown for NC State. 15th different Wolfpack player to catch a touchdown this season. Christopher Dunn has made 197 consecutive extra points. Puts it through easily. North Carolina State up 14 to three. Ben Finley with second touchdown pass of the season. Even you can't put the announcer jinx on Christopher Dunn. He's just too good. Take a look at that last touchdown. You'll see Timmons inside receivers gonna run a post route. And he's got Cameron Kelly right over the top of him. And then that safety, Don Chapman, both of them stare in the backfield and Chapman gets flat footed, gets run past and a perfect ball placed by Ben Finley where only his receiver can go get it. Really nice route and throw there 
from Finley to Timmons. It's a team that was ranked 13th in the preseason poll, tied for the best in school history. The other was in 1975. And they started 4-0. They got to number 10 in the country, their highest ranking since 2002. But then the injury started to happen. They lost to Clemson. No shame in that on the road. But you had Devin Leary, the quarterback, go down with a pec injury against Florida State. Second season that has ended because of injury. And then M.J. Morris, who started a couple of games, a true freshman, didn't play last week, not playing today. Touchback, it'll come out to the 25 for the Tar Heels as we take a look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Student sections across the country are competing to be the Live Moss student section of the year all season long. Not surprised to not see as many joyous faces with the way this game has gone, coming on the heels of the home loss to Georgia Tech last week. Right now feels like a crucial juncture for Drake May and this offense to start to get it together. The NC State defense has really stifled them so far here in this ball game. A lot of coverage, a lot of contested throws. Drake May's been off three drops in that first quarter. Can this passing attack in this offense come to life here in the second quarter? Omarion Hampton is in the game at running back. Only five attempts the last three games combined. He's going to get a touch here. And it looked like he lost his footing right away. And then he got smacked by Tanner Ingle after a one-yard pickup. With Tanner Ingle is a downhill safety. Triggers right now into the box. Now they're showing, they're sitting back, and it looks like a light box. But boy, right on the snap, such an aggressive attack from Tony Gibson's defense. They're well coached, tackle extremely well, relentless defense here for this Wolfpack. Second and nine, May taking off here, and elects not to slide, and gets drilled by Isaiah Moore is back on the field at the 30. You're talking about Gibson, and earlier we were commenting on Dave Dorn, probably does not get enough credit for what he's done in 10 years in North Carolina State. Three nine-win seasons. They're going to go to a bowl for the eighth time. Uh, injuries were the culprit this year, but they're competitive every single year in the ACC. Done an excellent job, built a legitimate football team, and they are edgy, just like he coaches. And third down and six, over the middle. Good open field tackle, though, on Antoine Green by Aiden White. Going to be fourth down. It was interesting in our comment. Well, Tony Gibson decides he's going to bring pressure here. He's going to bring Ingle from the back level. Ball comes out quick. You know, you got man to man coverage, but Aiden White with an excellent open field tackle to bring up fourth down. Dusty, you were talking about the edge of Dave Dorn in our conversation with him this week. Doran said, look, they don't like us. We hate them. We're blue collar. They're elitist. Their coaches talk down to us. They talk behind our backs and recruiting negatively about our coaching staff. And we said, coach, is this off the record or on the record? He said, I don't give a bleep, <laughs> meaning it's on the record. And there you go. Now you heard it. And I'll tell you what, his players are feeding off that energy and passion of Dave Doran in this game. The AT&T Countdown to the College Football Playoff National Championship. Monday, January 9th on ESPN. College Football presented by Arby's on ABC is brought to you by Burger King. This was last year in Raleigh. NC State scores two touchdowns in 26 seconds and then Sam Howell throws a pick to seal the win for the Wolfpack. Dave Dorn, year 10, Mac Brown, second stint, year 14 overall, as the snap goes behind, Finley falls on it back at the three yard line. That's really the first good thing to happen to North Carolina in this game, loss and, of 15. And a reminder, Grant Gibson got hurt against Boston College. He had started 45 straight games leading into that, and they've got Dylan McMahon, and there was a couple of bad snaps a week ago. That one clearly got away from him. Maybe the biggest play, one of the biggest plays North Carolina's had all day. Carolina crowd coming alive now. Here's Houston straight ahead. 
bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Finally, some fire and energy out of the Carolina defense. Jabari Ritzy with the hit. It'll bring up third and 25. Well, Jabari Ritzy's been playing really good football. Might have been the best game of his career a week ago against Georgia Tech. Showing some versatility, playing on the edge, playing inside. They've had some injuries up front, and his role has increased, and he's answered the bell. Can this defense answer the bell on third down and give their offense good field position? NC State will just be conservative here. Houston to the 10, stood up by Cedric Gray. And so a quick three and out, and North Carolina should get good field position. Cedric Gray is just a tackling machine coming into this ball game. Over 120 tackles on the season. Part of that's because the defense is on the field so much. But between him and Power Eccles, they played so many snaps this year. They don't have any depth at linebacker. And they've continued to be the go-to guys for Gene Chizik in this defense all season long. See if Carolina comes after. Noon Kester is about five yards deep in the end zone. Downs is the return man at his 42. They're going to set up the return. And it's fair caught around the 42-yard line, so 47-yard punt. Good job by Newcaster that time from his end zone. Take a look at the All-State playoff predictor. Now Georgia going to get in even if they lose. Unless they lose to Georgia Tech tomorrow, then we might have another story. That would be quite the story. Brent Key, man, if he could pull that feet off, they may have to give him the job after the game. Yeah, really. Winner of Ohio State, Michigan feels like they got a great chance to Clemson. get in as well. Clemson only a 36% chance, and if North Carolina loses, that's not going to help Clemson. They play next week in the ACC title game. Trying to set up a screen to Antoine Green, and that was going nowhere. Aiden White was all over that from jump. Another negative play, loss of one or two. That's the 10th negative play or zero yard play out of 27 snaps. It's Wolfpack defense all over him. Excellent plant and drive and recognition from Aiden White when he saw the screen right in the hip pocket. Made a nice tackle. Dusty, everything is dink and dunk right now. It's resulting into a lot of negative plays, as you just mentioned. They have got to start attempting some intermediate and vertical shots because NC State's just squatting on them, expecting the underneath stuff. I totally agree, Tom, and I get it. They're deploying a lot of guys into coverage, yep. but you're going to have to trust his quarterback and, and trust his playmakers to make a play. Play action for May. Looking downfield, but everybody's covered. May on the move. And a flag down as May throws it away. So contact in the secondary downfield, although that ball was thrown out of bounds. Derek Pitts, I think they're going to get him. Holding, Holding. defense under 24 of an eligible pass receiver. 10-yard penalty automatic, first down. Pitts just kind of before the pass. Pitts kind of just tackled Josh Downs. Confusing on the far sideline. As it turned into a scramble drill, and you see Pitts trying to work back to his quarterback. Just kind of gets him wrapped up and throws him to the ground. Right now, North Carolina will take yards any way they can get them. Ball in midfield. Carolina down 14-3. May to the sideline for Antoine Green. And a gain of 11 and a first down for Green, who missed the first three games of the season with a collarbone injury. Injured again a couple weeks ago against Wake Forest. Did not play last week in the Georgia Tech game, but is back today. Makes such a difference having him on the field that time. NC State brought the pressure. Good identification by May. There's Elijah Green gobbled up as Peyton Wilson goes high up into the air to make the tackle. Go game. But Peyton Wilson, another one of these excellent linebackers. Tony Gibson said the best linebacking court he's ever had at any place, and that's quite the statement. He's had some great rooms in West Virginia, Pitt, Michigan. This group stacks up with anybody. And talking about Peyton Wilson, just said never stops. Got a motor that just won't quit. Plays a great passion. And constantly all over the football field. He missed last week. Presence being felt here in this game. So again, a negative play. Loss of one. Room, though, this time for Elijah Green. Able to break a tackle inside the 30. Knocked out of bounds at the 27th. The first down. And a gain of 12 on the play. 
Well, it's a really good cutback here by Elijah Green. You're going to see Peyton Wilson actually slide inside. Green sees it, gets to the edge. Nice job making Ingle miss in the open field. And a quality pickup. It's so far this half, Elijah Green on the ground has been the best offense Carolina's come up with. He's been their best back the last month. May on the rollout. And his pass is picked off, and then the ball came out incomplete. Wilson had it, but couldn't secure it to the ground. Again, a misfire by Drake May. Let's pressure Drake Thomas coming to him. He flushes Drake May off of his spot, tries to get rid of the football. It's excellent Turn coverage the down the field by Peyton Wilson. And Peyton Wilson injured on the play. He just got back. He missed last week due to injury. Down again. Dustin Dvorak, Tom Luganville back in Chapel Hill. North Carolina has scored a touchdown in every first half this season. Only three points so far, but the Tar Heels on the move. Second down and 10 at the 27 of NC State. Drake May struggled, but fits that one in inside the 15 yard line. Antoine Green to the 10, and out of bounds. One of the better throws for Drake May, gain of 17. I really like here how Antoine Green sets it down right in between two defenders. Zone coverage and an excellent find by Drake May. And Antoine Green really good after the catch, setting up North Carolina inside the 10. Boy, are they glad that Green is back. They run it. And wow, big hit by Tanner Ingle. Peyton Wilson, by the way, is back in the game. And Ingle laid the lumber that time. And Elijah Green, no game. It'll be second and goal from the nine. Also, Corey Durden, the nose tackle. Nice job inside, getting off a block. Nowhere for Green to go, and you mentioned it. With Tanner Engel coming downhill, capping off that run. Nice job by the safety, Landon Wood. Gonna run it again. This time, some more. the mindset there by Phil Longo. Elijah Green has been really good on the ground against this stingy Wolfpack defense. Rode him into the end zone. Carolina making this a ball game here before the first half is over. Burnett with the point after. 14 to 10. NC State. What's well, a counter? It's the favorite play in this run game for North Carolina. Pull backside guard and tackle. William Barnes, Spencer Rollin, excellent job securing their blocks and paving a path. Left side caves everything down. And you see Rollin getting up on that second level. Good block there on Peyton Wilson. And Elijah Green with good vision. Hit the downhill, running through a tackle into the end zone, and a much, much needed touchdown for the Tar Heels. No, Dusty, when you look at this run game for North Carolina, they come out of the locker room to start the third quarter. There's got to be an emphasis on continuing to run the ball so that they can create some one-on-one -on -one matchups in the passing game and force NC State to load the box. No question, Tom, I'm with you. And then once they do that, then you can start to take more of your shots down the field. Yep. And they have a counter, you know, RPO game off that counter play. I would imagine that's going to be something we see them come back to throughout the course of this game. But what a first half here for Elijah Green. Julian Gray is deep for NC State. Wolf back with all three of its timeouts. Gray across the 10. And knocked out of bounds past the 25. Shoved out at the 29-yard line. A flag down. And now some pushing and shoving. First time we've really seen it in this rivalry game where the temper on each sideline have gotten out of control a little bit. Some of the North Carolina players from their sideline coming After out play, of the field. Personal foul on this area roughness. Kicking team number 15. A 15 yard penalty to be added to the end of the run. First down. First down. Mm -hmm. 
Looked like it was Hollins for North Carolina. They're two number 15s. Just want to be sure that we got the right one. But it appeared that it was Hollins that got flagged for it there. Plays over. Got to be smarter. Got to be smarter in that spot. Now, all of a sudden, after a big score, try to get some momentum. Great field position for NC State. They're going to run Allen here. No running room. He tried to cut it back as he saw Cedric Gray flash into the hole. And he got maybe a yard. Gray, the leading tackler. In fact, he leads all power five players. Went 122 tackles on the season coming in. He's a junior out of Charlotte. I like his size at 6'2", 230. He's a downhill linebacker. I think his tackling has improved throughout the course of the season. Key cog in the heart of that defense for the Tar Heels. But ben Finley's been great so far, 8-10. And his first start, make it 9 of 11, completed. And how about the face plant by Carter? Just sticking his hand out into the grill of Storm Duck, taking him to the ground as he went to the turf. It's a first down into North Carolina territory. Well, I'm impressed by the poise of Ben Finley. Not phased, under control, very calm, zone coverage, locates Devin Carter, which has been great to see him back. Another Wolfpack player who wasn't there a week ago. He's back. He saw that power with the stiff arm at the end of that catch. Finley to the air. Pump fake trying to set up the screen. Dumping it off to Michael Allen. And he's knocked down at the 40-yard line. Here comes a flag on the missed tackle that time. There might have been a face mask. Legend Cavazos missed the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 59 to be added to the end of the run. First down. They didn't say who, but I think it was six. Cavazos who tried to tackle him, and it looked like he got the mask and twisted it. So a 15-yarder, that's going to put the ball inside the 30. It was very well set up play. They fake Thayer Thomas in the flats to the field. They come back with the screen, and it's very well set up to Michael Allen. Take a look and see if Cavazos grabbed that face mask. I think they missed it, Dusty. Well, I wasn't a, I wasn't a face mask. No. That wasn't a face mask at all. Nope. Well, that was bad. Allen trying to get the edge inside the 20 and grounded at the 18, but that's eight yards on the ground. Again, we've seen this crew call clear incompletions, completed passes on two occasions, and then badly missing the... Uh, the face mask call there against the Cavazos calling him for it when it shouldn't have been. He's on his shoulder pads. Wasn't even near his face. He didn't twist in that it spot. No, no. Nice run there by Michael Allen. Back-to-back -back plays. He's had nice, productive yardage. I got a timeout by NC State. By the way, Finley has completed nine consecutive passes. First time out for the Wolfpack, two remaining. Let's check in with Kevin Nagandi now in the studio. Hey, Kevin, one halftime report just minutes away alongside Booger and Jesse here. Uh, listen, the crowd at Chapel Hill now woken up after we saw the offense score. Yeah, the receivers are starting to get off the jam a little bit, and, and Drake May is starting to be a little bit more accurate with the pass. How about the other quarterback, Ben Finley? He said if he got the start, he was going to let it fly. <laughs> he He's did. He's been so good. Yeah. 10 of 12 right now in this game. Ball's not touching the ground. Yeah, Wolfpack have been fantastic dealing with so many injuries, especially at the quarterback position highlights coming your way. Plus, we'll take a look back at the rivalry games, including Jesse's time with Florida, Florida State. And to your guys' point on the quarterback stuff, Kevin, four different starting quarterbacks for NC State. That's the first time since 1953 that that's happened for the Wolfpack. Nine straight completions for Ben Finley. Played last week a lot against Louisville, but his first start today. And he's been the scout team quarterback for most years, so he's seen one of the best defenses day in, day out on a weekly basis as he's trying to make plays against this Wolfpack defense. And the staff even told us that's, a, that's helped him a lot. Going to be tough to see a better defense than he's seen every day. There's Allen getting the carry. And did not get the first down wrapped up by Don Chapman. It'll bring up third down. Uh, that name is familiar, and 
You watch NC State football over the years. Ben Finley is the younger brother of Ryan Finley, who's from Arizona. Three-year starter here for the Wolfpack, was a fourth-round draft pick of the Bengals back in 2019. Some good quarterback lineage there. Just a little salad there on Ben Finley. Got Jack Chambers here, who had one play earlier in the game, and it was a touchdown. He's out there to run the ball. Cedric Gray, a turnover by Chambers inside the 20. Don Chapman knocked it out. And the Heels recover. What a huge play here for North Carolina defensively. Gene Chizik's got to be fired up with this stop and takeaway. Don Chapman, Don Chapman comes downhill. Excellent tackle, helmet on the football. And it's Cedric Gray who's going to wind up with this ball. Just how you draw it up. Perfect tackle and execution. Helmet on the football. Cedric Gray to scoop. Cedric Gray there to scoop it up. Exact same play North Carolina State ran earlier on the opening possession for a touchdown run. Just that outside stretch with the quarterback. Wasn't well defended the first time. Perfectly defended here the second time. And now with 2:10 to go, two timeouts. And yes, maybe Drake May is searching for his confidence, but this is a guy that has led his team to six come from behind wins. That's the most in the country. So we've seen him going, going down the field a lot, whether it's at the end of games or at the end of the first half. Not great numbers yet, but let's see what he does here. May in trouble, flushed out of the pocket, and going down is Antoine Green to make the catch. First down to the 28. Really nice job by Drake May. Feeling the pressure off to his left, just slightly moves to the right. And Green with a good job working back to the quarterback and completing the catch. Making a dump it off to Elijah Green out in space. And upended as a flag flies. Derek Pitts made the tackle. He's injured as well. There's actually two penalty markers down, it looked like. Holding. Offense number five. J.J. Jones, one of the receivers out there trying to spring Elijah Green, call for the hole. Trying to set up that swing screen. Well done. By, well done by Pitts working underneath this block. Sorry, it's battle working underneath that block. Let's see what happened to Pitts there as he came in on the tackle. Kind of been the story of this season, unfortunately, for NC State. Just dealt with so many injuries. Looked Obviously, fairly the, benign. Yeah. Carolina's had its fair share of injuries. Tony Grimes starting corner, not playing today because of an injury. Cameron Kelly is done for the day, we're being told as well. So that's two more starters for North Carolina out today on defense. And again, another player goes down for NC State. What do you make so far of what you've seen here from Drake May? This is the first time we've watched him yeah. struggle. Again, last week they had a 17-0 lead. He gave it up. He, he made a nice play to Downs last week, but dropped the ball that might have won the game. Probably the most he struggled all year, right? In this offense in the passing game, it's really just been clicking on all cylinders all season. They had few mistakes, and we saw him stymied a week ago in the second half. And here today, whether it's receivers dropping balls, Drake may slightly off, and it's a really good NC State defense. They've got a good game plan, putting a lot of guys in coverage, but he's just been thrown off a little bit. Seems like he's starting to work his way out of it. Antoine Green, he's caught a couple of passes, but... I mean, 68 yards passing in the first half, and who would have thought of the two redshirt freshmen starting today that it'd be Ben Finley right. that's actually been the more impressive quarterback in this ballgame so far. And again, you always wonder how a young quarterback is going to respond to really his first adversity. We talked with Mac Brown at length about that. Mac said Drake is, is pretty even keel and yeah. expected him to handle it well. But you made a great point. There have been more drops in this game than Carolina had all season combined coming in. May off play action. Looking downfield. Instead takes off after he was almost sacked. And he's to the 24-yard line brought down by Peyton Wilson. So on first and 19, he gets about seven. 
He wanted to take his shot to Antoine Green, just could not do it. They actually say he slid, so it's where he started the slide there back at the 14. Now he's tripped up, and down he goes. Corey Durden got a piece of him. Going to bring up third down and long. Boy, Corey Durden's been great so far today. First team all ACC a season ago. Nice little spin move, just keep working, keep fighting. Three-man pressure, able to get Drake May on the ground. Really well done by the veteran nose tackle. A little surprised NC State wouldn't call a timeout. With yeah. Carolina third down at 14, but we'll see what May does here. He's sacked back at the 21-yard line. Davin Van. Now the Wolfpack will call a timeout. Well, there were six sacks a week ago for Georgia Tech. Some were on the O-line, some were on the quarterback. It's been so long and struggled at times this year in pass pro. Watch the dip the here by Davin Van. Gets that dip, nine. that rip. They continues to run the hoop. That's the old hoop drill. Keep running. And nowhere to go for Drake May down the field. It's an excellent job by Davin Van just continuing to work and get a big sack here late in this first half. Eight sacks in the last two games of Drake May. And a few of those you could put on him. Not sure about that one there. Everybody covered downfield again. How are you on the hoop drill? The little figure eight hoop drill? I bet you were really <laughs> good turning that corner, bending, right? Well, and I probably would have worn a number in the 40s, too. You know, oh, those no question, right? yeah. I, mean, I know you were a 90s kind of guy. Absolutely. You know, old school wear in the 90s, but you got What does different. 40s mean? What, what does 40s mean, Dave? Well, the guy who just made the plays wearing, <laughs> wearing a 40. <laughs> Dave oh. definitely strikes me as uh, somebody in the 40s, no question. But a good stop, <laughs> nonetheless, by NC State. It's usually a long snapper number, I guess, is probably why I threw it out there. <laughs> Here's Thomas on the return. He's got some room. And out of bounds. They got plenty of time. A timeout. 40 seconds to go, and they've got a very good kicker as well, who has not missed, by the way, all year. It's Sunday, NFL Countdown Crew has you covered for week 12, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And then Monday Night Countdown, getting a set for Steelers Colts. And speaking of the Colts, Jeff Saturday is here today. He is the interim coach, of course, of the Indianapolis Colts, who have been our colleague at ESPN. His son, Jeff, graduating today. And Jeff, who played for Mac Brown the first time around. I, I was shocked. I forgot that Jeff Saturday was undrafted yeah. coming out of North Carolina, as good a player as he was. He was great. I played against him a couple different times. Excellent player. Did a nice job as head coach. Finley throws complete to Lassane. Did not get the first down, so the clock is moving here. 30 seconds and counting. Christopher Dunn's long is 53. But they got to get a little bit closer here, taking a lot of time off the clock. Finley to the sideline. It's caught. First down for Rooks and out of bounds to stop it with 20 seconds to go at the 35-yard line. That's really well done there by Finley. Understanding the situation. Well, I thought they got that first down, so they came up short yeah, in the first down. Wow. Right. But he did go out of bounds, so clock stopped nonetheless. <laughs> Surprise me if you see a run here by Jordan Houston just to get the first down. Finley checking here at the line of scrimmage. Got a timeout, and you get the ball coming out of that locker room. Great kicker as well. And they do get it. Houston, so the clock will stop to reset the chains. They're not going to call the timeout. It'll start again on the red for play. We'll clock it right here. So 14 seconds to go, second down, just outside the 30-yard line. Christopher Dunn, their kicker, has tied the all-time ACC record for points with two extra points in this game. And he's made 21 field goals and 21 tries this year, the second ever in FBF history to start a season 21 for 21. We'll see if he gets a chance to add to NC State's lead. Be smart if you're Ben Finley right here. You're in field goal range. Finley. And it's pulled in inside the 15 by Sebro. First down, and he got out of bounds at the 12-yard line with eight seconds to go. How about this throw and tight coverage from Ben Finley to NC State Sebro. takes its final time out of the half. Wow. Be a full timeout. 
just been blown away with the poise and production of Ben Finley here today. He's been great. Well, let's take a look in case you're just joining us at what happened to start the game. Jack Chambers about a minute into the game after a long pass play comes in, runs the ball in for a touchdown. Then some of what you're talking about, some great throws from Ben Finley. That made it 14-3. North Carolina came back with a rushing touchdown to make it 14-10. And now the Wolfpack threatening out of timeouts, eight seconds to go. How do you handle this here? You've got a quarterback who does have some experience, even though it's his first start. He played here at Chapel Hill off the bench a couple years ago. You probably have one shot right to the end one, zone. One shot to the end zone, can't take a sack, throw it through the goalpost if nothing's there. I think the way he's dealing right now, though, Give him an opportunity. See if he can put six on the board before we go in for halftime. But cannot get tackled in bounds. Got to be mindful of that play clock. And don't get greedy. Nothing's there, Tom. Just throw it away, right? Yeah, absolutely. Out of the back of the end zone, line up, kick the field goal. You get the ball coming out of half. Carter down here in the boundary. See if they cheat a safety over the top. Finley throws, and there was nobody home. Maybe just threw that one away when he saw that there was nothing there. So five seconds left. Here comes Christopher Dunn, the kicker. That's smart, man. Like safety cheats over the top. Nowhere to go with that. He wanted to go to his big physical wide receiver, Carter. Thought if he had man-to-man, -man, maybe we'll take a shot as the safety rolls over. Recognizes and just throws it away. Very well executed, well done there to close out the half to set up this field goal by Ben Finley. 29 yard attempt for Christopher Dunn. And makes it look easy, splitting the uprights. He's 22 of 22 on the season. Could be a big three points going into halftime, 17 to 10. NC State leading at Chapel Hill. NC State 6-1 and one this season, win leading at halftime. Capital One Halftime Report, Kevin, Boog, Jesse coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. Ben Finley, 13 to 16, 155 yards in this touchdown to Terrell Timmons Jr., 28 yards, NC State up 17 to 10. On the road in Chapel Hill, a fantastic rivalry. Another close one. We will see how that plays out in the second half. Jesse Palmer, Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagani here with you. When you look at Carolina's offense, what's been the difference the last six quarters? It's just been out of whack. It's been penalties, inconsistent quarterback play. And for an offense that averaged 40 points a game yeah. before last week, the last six quarters, mm. only 27 points. They got to get back in rhythm. The quarterback's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Get him some easy throws. And they're, ha they're having some issues with the blitz. Yes. You saw that against yes. Georgia Tech, and you're seeing it again in the first half here. And they're trying to answer it out of empty sets with hot throws and quick screens. But they're not able to free yeah. anybody. I'd be curious to know if – Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator here in the second half, might start max protecting more, bringing in running backs and tight ends to give Drake May a, t a chance to take shots deeper down. Uh, the listen, field. the redshirt freshman has been fantastic. Yeah, he he cannot amazing. carry every single aspect of that offense. He needs some help. We'll see how that plays out. This halftime report is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? This halftime report is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? College game day in Columbus tomorrow morning for Michigan, Ohio State. Handful of games that have playoff implications booked tomorrow. Yeah, Notre Dame and SC. SC holding on to those playoff hopes. Can they take on a Notre Dame team that's been playing really, really well? They have to play well to beat them. Clemson on the outside looking in as well. A chance, though, to impress the committee against a South Carolina team that just hung 63 on Tennessee last week. Both games on ABC. Second half of our game on ABC. Elijah Green, the touchdown. Carolina down by seven. NC State getting the ball. I mentioned the second half. It's after this. ESPN College Football presented by Arby's. Nightfall here in Chapel Hill, and you're watching the ACC on ESPN. Tar Heels trying to bounce back after a home loss last week to Georgia Tech, just their second loss of the season, and they trail NC State 17-10. The Wolfpack, despite starting its fourth different quarterback this year, leading on the road. 
Carolina's already secured a spot in its first ACC title game since 2015. We'll play Clemson next week. NC State trying to finish the season with nine wins. That would include, obviously, a victory in bowl season. They won nine games a year ago. NC State starting the second half with possession. Got a field goal at the end of the first half to extend the lead to seven. Here's Julian Gray, long run, trying to get the edge at the 20. And push back at the 25 and out of bounds. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak in the booth, Tom Lugenbilt down on the field. Boy, the defense of North Carolina State, despite injuries throughout the year, Dusty, they've been consistently solid. No question. We knew coming in, they were billed to be, I thought, the best defense of the ACC. And the Drake made a lot of drop eight, rush three. And there's nowhere for Drake May to go with the football. He can't pull the trigger. And this pass rush with a three-man rush, it's finding a way to get home, as we saw just before the break. Nowhere to go with the football, yet the pass rush relentless on Drake May as poor a half as he's had all season. A big credit that NC State defense. Good job here by the North Carolina defense, stuffing Michael Allen at the point of attack. No game. I think that's one of the surprises to me is the amount of success we saw Ben Finley have in that first half of the 155 yards through the air. But the rushing attack, which thought coming in, talk with Tim Beck, Dave Dorn, that was going to be the key. We've got to be able to run the football. I expect NC State's going to still try to establish a line of scrimmage and see if they can run the football here in the second half. To your point, Dust, only 22 rushing yards. Meanwhile, Finley has completed 13 of his last 14 through the air. And another completion to the 30-yard line to Lassane. Gain of five. Here's Tom. Well, guys, you saw NC State kind of come out and run the football, and Dave Doran going to the locker room, very pleased with his football team, but doesn't feel like they'll win this game, just dropping back and throwing it on it on every snap. Mac Brown, conversely, offensively, he says, we've got to do a better job of protecting versus a three-man rush, taking what the defense gives us versus drop eight, and when the opportunity is there vertically, Drake May's got to get the ball out of his hand and take some shots. Pull well, that trigger when it's there, no question, great. Report there, Tom. See what Finley does here in third down and five. He'll throw it. Quick pass. Incomplete. Going for Lassane. So a three and out for NC State. Really one of the few misfires that we've seen from Ben Finley. Nice job by Lassane sitting down in a good place. That ball behind him back to the inside. Lassane unable to come up that catch and a good opening three and out for the Carolina defense. Noon Kester to punt to Josh Downs, who's been really quiet. Just the one catch for a couple yards in that first half for Downs. Downs has to back up, field it, had his eyes at the 15, but makes a nice move. And dragged down at the 29-yard line by the long snapper, Joe Shimko. You mentioned it, Dave. Josh Downs, one catch, two yards. He's been targeted five times. This Carolina offense just completely out of rhythm, out of sync. See if they can show up and flip the script here in this second half. But Josh Downs, to me, has to be an important piece of this passing attack here in the second half. One of the best receivers in all of college football, completely held in check in the first 30 minutes of this game. He leads the conference in receiving despite missing two games. 77 catches in over 100 a year ago. A great chance to be a first or second round pick in the NFL draft. Throwing to the left to J.J. Jones, who was targeted often in that first half, and May has a completion for about five. Starting to do a better job sitting down in those that zone coverage. See J.J. Jones sits down in a nice quick find there by Drake May. May was having a Heisman Trophy caliber season until last week. No touchdown passes for the first time, and a season low 202 yards. They're going to run green straight ahead. He gets dumped by Isaiah Moore after a gain of three to bring up third down and a yard or two here for North Carolina. The first adversity that Drake May has really faced in his young career, Richard Freshman, who was lighting up college football until last week. The only losses for the Tar Heels were against Notre Dame and then last week to Georgia Tech. And it's not like they've had a great defense. May has been doing a lot of it on his own. 
Coming into today, counting for almost 40 touchdowns. They put him under center here. Sneak here. Oh. And the center gets pushed back. Corey Gaynor just got shoved back before he even snapped the ball. Look how fired up Gaynor is. He doesn't care that he just got put on his rear end. That's huge right there. Third and short. Offside. Defense with contact. 48. I got to the results in the first half. Corey Durden, Durden had a monster first half. And it's a little quick on the trigger there. And Corey Gaynor, an integral piece there at center, transferred in from Miami, really solidified things on the interior of that offensive line. A little John now back and forth with Gaynor and Durden after that offsides. Gaynor a transfer from Miami. Certainly helped May to have a veteran presence as your center. Fresh set of downs on the 43. And movement now by North Carolina. False start, false start. Offense, number 63. Five yard penalty, first down. Second penalty on the left guard, Ed Montalus. North Carolina seeking its first 10 win season since 2015. It would also be its second 10 win season in 25 years. What do you think of the job that Mac Brown has done coming back to North Carolina? Obviously, had success here the first time, won a national championship at Texas. We're back here in Chapel Hill as this program pointed in the right direction. May's pass caught. 45 yard line and out near midfield is Downs, just his second catch of the day. Gain of 10. Knew they're going to have to start getting Josh Downs involved. Really good catch here as he goes back inside. Strong hands. So quick and twitchy in short area spaces. As soon as he catches that football, eludes the defender, gets up the field. A nice pickup from first and long to second and very manageable here. Downs dad, Gary, played at North Carolina State and then in the NFL. May flipping it downfield and it's caught but out of bounds. Antoine Green was out of play when he made the catch. Aiden White in coverage downfield for the Wolfpack. Tried to slide that foot just a little bit too far on the outside. Yeah, pass just sailed a little bit there on Drake May. Nice route, really good coverage by Aiden White as well. Now in the field, those two have been battling all day, three versus three. That's. That's good on good. Aiden White doing a great job of using the sideline as his 12th man and just forcing Green out of bounds. There's a double move there, and he didn't bite on it. You're right, Tom. That's really well played. He's got four picks on the year, including one for a touchdown. Design quarterback run, and North Carolina State is all over Drake May. Drake Thomas gobbles him up at the 46-yard line for another big play out of the linebacker. Well, it's Drake versus Drake. I think it's the ACC Offensive Player of the Year and the defense, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. You see him just coming off the edge, recognizes quickly, quarterback draw. Nobody accounts for him. As sure a tackler as you'll see in the ACC, Drake Thomas with a nice third down stop. Leads the ACC and tackles for a loss and forces a punt here on fourth down. Thomas from the 13 yard line makes the first man miss and then knocked out of bounds around the 25 41 yard punt return of about eight yards back to Chapel Hill in a moment. Yeah, I'm up on the cloud ain't coming back down. Mascots are kind of loving up on each other. It'll be a little bit more contentious between them. Ball start. Offense, number 52. Five yard penalty. First down. Look at you trying to incite violence amongst hey, the furry animals. Down I'm just the field. saying. I mean. <laughs> They've been working it for like 10 minutes now, by the way. You can't tell me a wolf would be that nice to a ram. Come on, Dave. Try to eat that thing. I'm still full from yesterday. Daryl Jones, they're going to say incomplete, hit the dirt. Finley's been sharp for the most part today. And what could be 
A coming out party for him today. Again, a guy that's had some experience, but first start. Although Devin Leary, when he's healthy, he's going to be the guy next year. You would if, think. He, if he comes back, if he's back, and he sure can. MJ Morris was excellent when he came in second half against Virginia Tech, as well as that win that they had against Wake. Tim Beck's done a nice job with these quarterbacks as Leary's gone out. Here's a swing pass to Houston out in space and wrapped up by Power Eccles. What a great name, by the way. Eccles with a tackle at the 24th third. Now, you mentioned Tim Beck. He's been around Texas, Ohio State, Nebraska, programs with rich tradition. He said this rivalry obviously said, look, Ohio State, Michigan's in Texas, Oklahoma, but he said this one's up there in terms of the intensity and hatred that these teams have for one another. Gene Chizik showing pressure here. See if they come after this young quarterback instead of just letting him sit back and throw the football. They only rush three. Finley's pass is caught, but short of the line to gain. Porter Rooks brought down at the 33. And North Carolina State, with a seven-point lead, will punt the ball on fourth down and two. Show the pressure inside. They bail out immediately. A lot of defensive backs on the field as they drop eight. Shift everything at the snap. Ball comes out quick, and it's a really good tackle. And then far boundary by DeAndre Boykins. Second straight three and out here to start this second half for NC State. Josh Downs, nephew of Dre Bly, longtime NFL player, who is on the North Carolina coaching staff, played here collegiately. Let's us one bounce again at the 20 yard line. And they're going to say it's a touchback. It will come out to the 20. That was really dangerous by Downs there. Ends up being a 67 yard punt by Nunecaster, but only a 47-yard net. Seventeen ten, North Carolina State leading North Carolina. So I asked Dusty, full disclosure during the break, all right, what's the biggest game, most impactful game of the college football play? If you said, come on, man, it's too easy. Michigan, Ohio State. So how about an under-the-radar sneaky game that can impact the college football playoff? I think right here on ABC tomorrow, Clemson, South Carolina in the ACC with what South Carolina did to Tennessee. A lot of eyeballs. Clemson could have an impressive win, potentially. I think that one's got some teeth. And how about you? Speaking of teeth, that black shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Black Friday. Dave will tell you with his shirt. I love it. <laughs> Keep your distance, Dusty. May in trouble. Gets rid of the pass here with bodies all around him incomplete. Tanner Ingle had some pressure that time and almost took down May. He's a big guy at 6'4", 220. With Tony Gibson dialing up pressure, you'll see it come from both edges. And it's Peyton Wilson who's able to get home off the edge. And Wet's well, being strong right there. A nice job evading that pressure, just getting that ball out of bounds by Drake May. He had Wilson early and Engel late, both getting a shot in on May. They run it here off the left side. What a hit Ooh. by Engel, man. He is not afraid to come downhill and lay the lumber. He's only 185 pounds. It's not like this is a 230-pound safety. Got a handful of tackles now. Third down and long. You see it on the tape, man. He's always coming downhill with bad intentions. First team, all ACC a year ago. He's had an excellent year this year. And that's how you come down and tackle a running back in the hole at the safety position. So big third down and nine. North Carolina searching for an explosive play on offense. Josh Downs, we'll see if they try to beat him up to the line of scrimmage. Inside receiver up top. They bring some pressure. Pass is caught underneath, but not going to be a first down. Ball came out, but they ruled that Downs was down, fourth down. And Carolina will punt it away. And that's it's kind of in the name of this game. Catch tackle. It's such a good tackling team for NC State. And as Josh Downs sets that route down a couple yards shy of the chains, you know, typically he's able to evade that initial defender, but it's been a rarity here today against this Wolfpack defense. How many one-minute drives have we seen from North Carolina in this game? A ton. This is the eighth punt already for the Tar Heels. This was an offense that could not be stopped for most of the season. Good punt. Fair catch. Signal made by Thayer Thomas on the NC State 28.
And now let's take a look at today's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Billy Ben Finley so far, the red shirt freshman making his first ever start, has been excellent, especially in the first half. Perfectly placed football to freshman Terrell Timmons for the touchdown. How about this before the half? Cover two, sees it, hits the corner out, perfectly placed football, gets him into field goal range. What a start to this game. And Finley on the money again. Devin Carter past the 40-yard line to the 42. Another on-target throw for 14 yards. Yeah, now they move the pocket. Just roll him out to his right. The timing was perfection as Devin Carter works back on the comeback. Ball perfectly placed. And Devin Carter has had a huge presence in this game. Now three catches for 76 yards. And Ben Finley has been on target. He's been poised and most importantly decisive. He doesn't guess for a young player. 17 completions. That's a new career high. Previous was last week when he had 16. He'll throw it again, and it's caught again by Carter in North Carolina territory to the 45-yard line. 12 more yards through the air. North Carolina State into Tar Heel territory. So the play action here, you see the linebackers, Power Echoes evades the middle of the field. Also, Cedric Gray, at play action brings up the second-level defenders, opens up the middle of the field, and another strike from Ben Finley. Finley from Phoenix, Arizona, Paradise Valley High School. Came off the bench in the game here two years ago. North Carolina State got beat. He threw two picks in that game. Played just three games last year. In trouble here. Ball's out. It's still down. NC State may have gotten it back. Dylan McMahon reached out. The big guy looked like he grabbed it. Finley fumbles it, but his center recovers it. I don't know how he got it. Wow. What a job by Dylan McMahon. Although North Carolina, Travis Shaw is holding on to the ball. You can't tell who was able to get on top of that. Ball's out. It's on the ground. Looks like McMahon got it. Who knows what's happening underneath that pile down there. You see number four, Travis Shaw, trying to rip it out. But I think McMahon had secured it. Almost impossible to overturn the call on the field here with uh, video review, so NC State keeps possession second and 15. What disaster avoided there for NC State on a bad exchange there between Finley and Allen. Finley with time, waiting, throwing, caught. Daryl Jones and immediately thrown out of play by Power Eccles. So third down and long coming up here for the Wolfpack. Nice job by Power Eccles. Staying with the wide receiver, zone coverage, right there in his hip pocket, escorting him out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Big bodies coming off the field. A lot of defensive backs out there right now for North Carolina. Saw them just drop eight earlier. Showing that pressure again. They're gonna bail. And North Carolina State just gonna run it. On third and 15, and Michael Allen gets about 11. So fourth down and four. We'll see if Dave Doran goes for it here. The offense is staying on the field. I like this. And that's why you call that play, though, right, guys? Yep. You bring in Dilworth. You brought Power Echoes off the field. You're a little bit smaller out there defensively, and they run right at him. Here they go. Fourth down and four. Some confusion in the Carolina secondary right now. Guys looking around, talking. I like this mindset here by Dave Dorn. NC State letting him off the hook, though. Finley with a quick throw. It was behind the receiver, but caught for a first down by Porter Rooks to the 30-yard line. That's a huge conversion as NC State looks to go up two scores on this drive. Look how much space they're giving. So much cushion on fourth and short. you got to close that distance there. Easy pitch and catch for Ben Finley. As he locates yet another target, Porter Brooks. We were talking with Dave Doran this week about analytics. His coach in college at Drake, Rob Ash, was one of the fathers of analytics. And Coach Doran said, I, I read the book, I follow it, but sometimes I go by feel. Not sure if that was analytics or feel on fourth down and four. Finley looking for the throwback, and the pass was high. Trying to hit Sebro, the tight end. 
Second down and 10, 244 remaining in the third. He had him just overshot his tight end. I'm going to tell you what, they have tried multiple times to hit that wheel route. Michael Allen's brand the wheel many times, and if you go back to last week against Georgia Tech, it's an area North Carolina really struggled identifying backs out of the backfield. They've been much better in that regard so far here today. Second and 10 at the North Carolina 30. Run play, Allen to the 22-yard lines. That's a big gain again on the ground, about eight yards. And now flags come in with pushing and shoving after the play. Second or third time we've had extracurricular activity. You're going to get Derek Easton potentially blocking after the whistle. He's the starting right guard with... The center, Grant Gibson out. Dylan McMahon moving over After to play, play center. Play. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense number 53 for late knockdown. The down count should be third down. Dusty, somebody who played in a lot of rivalry games at Oklahoma, whether it was Bedlam or OU Texas, as a, as a lineman, how hard is it to keep your cool in these situations? It's tough, man, because, you know, it's a physical sport. It's a physical game, but running back is down. And you see Eason, he's engaged in that block, but clearly the whistle's blown, the play's over. He's got to find a way to shut it down. If the whistle hadn't blown, that'd just be a good old-fashioned pancake, and you get a pat on the back from your coaches and your teammates, but instead it's a very, very costly penalty. Yep, now it's third down and 17. They ran it on third and 15 and got 11 yards last time. They'll run it again in a broken tackle. Allen inside the 30, submarine to the 28. It'll be fourth down and about seven, and now North Carolina State will bring on the field goal team. Christopher Dunn has made all 22 of his attempts this year. Be about a 44-yard try. Well, I like the way Michael Allen's running the football here on that drive. You can see 25. Came in Rucker come inside, almost create a tackle for a loss, but an easy shrug for Michael Allen. He gets to the perimeter and sets up this very makeable field goal for Dunn. The all-time leading scorer in ACC history, Christopher Dunn has not missed a kick all season. Until now. Wide left, and it remains a one-score game. Good going, Dave. Mac Brown loves it. Dave Dorn somewhat in shock, not accustomed to seeing Christopher Dunn miss field goals, and this ball just barely bends off to the left. He pulled it just a touch. Would have been a huge field goal to put him up 10. Now still a one-score game. And Mac Brown knows very much within striking distance. But here's the problem if you're North Carolina. The offense has been able to do nothing in exactly the second right. half. But Drake May does have six come from behind second half wins. That's the most of any quarterback in the country. Maybe with a little momentum. We're going to run it. Hampton. Wrestled to the ground by Peyton Wilson. Just two yards off the left side. Here's that counter once again. Well played this time there. Once again, this time it's a cornerback. Shaheem Battle coming up and making a nice tackle. Tackling is a lost start in college football. Not with this team. It's what I'm saying, Tom. It's a, boy, it's a breath of fresh air yeah. to watch a team that can tackle and get ball carriers on the ground the way this defense does. Inside a minute to go here in the third, second down and eight. Play action pass. May with pressure in his face, under throws. Josh Downs. So third down and long coming up. It's Drake Thomas once again on the pressure coming around. Drake May unable to step through that throw, well short of his intended target. And he is just having all kinds of issues against this defense and not getting to a rhythm completely taking him out of his game. Three for 11 on third down today. They're 12th in the country coming in because of some of the heroics of May. See what he does here on third down. He's got a completion and a first down to Josh Downs past the 40-yard line. So Downs starting to make some plays here after just one catch in the first half. Huge third down conversion. Josh Downs, really nice route right there. You see kind of... 
Well, stanky leg there. Come out on the field for an injury to the defense. Goaded the defender into that. Tayshawn Smith, like he was going to take it up the field and breaks it off inside. A nice find from Drake May. And Smith shaken up on the play. Don't forget later tonight on ABC, we have another college football game for you. 16th ranked Florida State taking on Florida. That's a terrific rivalry. And then tomorrow night, number six USC hosting Notre Dame. Both games beginning 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Obviously huge for SC trying to Prove to the committee that they belong in the college football playoff. Do you think if USC wins that game and wins the Pac-12 championship that, that they played themselves into the top four? Do they need some help? They should, they should be in, in my estimation. When you look at the way they close out to beat UCLA on the road in that rivalry matchup, a Notre Dame team that the committee really respects, who's already got a win over Clemson, over this Carolina team. And then, you know, whoever they wind up playing in that Pac-12 championship, whether it's Oregon, if Oregon wins, they're in. I mean, yeah, I think they deserve to be in. And Caleb Williams, I think he's the best player in America right now. If only Can't somebody on, on this crew had picked USC to make the college football player. Hey. <laughs> oh, here we go. The black shirt is out. <laughs> I think it's the uh, mob boss that I'm working with here. I can call by you, Mr. Pash. <laughs> Next Sunday, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups and the Fiesta and Peach Bowls to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Recently, the guys will also unveil all the New Year's Six Bowl games and the final top 25 rankings in this four-hour special, which all starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, after Sunday NFL Countdown, ESPN and the ESPN app. It's an impressive win before our game today by Tulane. How about that job Willie Fritz has done? Punching their ticket to the American Conference Championship and going to host... That game next week, if UCF wins tomorrow, they'll play them. And talking about, you know, some of those uh, New Year's Six games, obviously the highest ranked group of five teams. So if Willie Fritz can take Tulane from a two-win team to winning their conference and into a New Year's Six, just what a tremendous coaching job that's been. Yeah, that's next Saturday on ABC. Don't know the opponent just yet. So ask you about USC, if it controls its own destiny. In your mind, yes. Yeah. Is there a team that doesn't, that needs some help that's in that top six or seven? I mean, obviously, LSU's got two losses. That's right. that's yeah. an obvious one. But anybody else? I mean, Clemson, they're just on the outside. I think they need some help, but I don't think that they're completely out of play in that regard. You know, I mean, obviously, the loser of... The game tomorrow between Ohio State and Michigan, they would need some help to, in my estimation, to get themselves back into play. But there's some big games here tomorrow, next weekend. Still a lot left to unpack. But it's in, it's just weird because you, you have to think that two teams that are in the top four can lose and yep. still get into the college football playoff. May back to work after the long injury timeout to run play here to Green, crossing midfield. And into NC State territory. It's been a while since they've crossed the 50. Gain of nine before Drake Thomas gets him down. I like that piece of running right there between the tackles. See Kamari Morales get out in front as a lead blocker. They need to get the ball back to Elijah Green. He was such a key cog in the first half. Get him going here in the, in the fourth quarter. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. here in Chapel Hill in this great rivalry in North Carolina between the Heels and the Pack. NC State up 17 to 10. North Carolina's Drake May has been sensational all year, but he has struggled since halftime of last week's game against Georgia Tech. Only 182 yards of total offense for the Tar Heels today. This is the first time they've crossed midfield in 20 minutes of game time. On second and one, they're going to keep it on the ground with Green. He's got the first down inside the 45. This is a great opportunity for the freshman Drake May, whether it's throwing it or just handing it off, but to lead a team down the field here and try to pull off another comeback. And he has been sensational all season in these moments. Even the loss to Georgia Tech a week ago, even though it wasn't great, let him down, put the pass right where it needed to be on fourth down to take the lead late in that game. Obviously, there was a drop. It didn't happen. But in these situations, Drake May's been about as clutch as anybody in college football. We'll see if he can do it here on a big stage against their in-state rival. Dad Mark played quarterback here at North Carolina for Mac Brown. Drake's pass caught inside the 35. Antoine Green able to get rid of a defender. And to the 27. Gain of 16. Green getting a lot of that after the catch. 
Boy, it's a strike to Green, though. Very confident throw. Ball's out quick. How about Antoine Green? The strength fighting through the tackle. Aiden White can't get him on the ground. And a big play here to start this fourth quarter. Ten yards after the catch, and they're inside the NC State 30-yard line. Back to the run. Antoine Green in trouble, but able to get out of there and get positive yardage instead of losing two or three. But again, Tanner Engel catches up to him. Second down and long coming up here for North Carolina. Elijah Green, that would have been a negative play. The fact that he even got any positive yards whatsoever, credit to him. But Tanner Engel continues to come flying downhill to get the sophomore ball carrier on the ground. Second down and nine. Mentioned the terrific rivalry that exists between these two teams. A lot of talk during the season and before the season from coaches and players. Morales on the dump off. Out of bounds, shy of the 20. Going to bring a third down at about four. And maybe in four down territory, it's still early. Two minutes gone by in the fourth. Road team has won six of the last nine meetings. NC State won last year in Raleigh, scoring two touchdowns in the final 30 seconds. And Dave Dorn did not mix words this week with us. Told his team we need to finish, and you're going to feel better beating a team that you hate to close out the season. That's the mindset of this NC State team as they've come in here to Chapel Hill. Let's see if they come after May here. They're going to. May hitches, now throws and not on the same page with his receiver. Gavin Blackwell stopped his route. You take three points here. You got 12.31 to go, or are you going four and on four down? I think I'd take the points here. Mac Brown's over there talking to Sparky Woods. What does that book say? Yep. What's that book say, coach? It looks like he's going to roll the dice and go for it. Boy, that was miscommunication there out there on the perimeter, Dave. I mean, it's just a completely misfire by the receiver, by the quarterback, one of the two. NC State's running out a couple of players here late. You saw those great numbers for Drake May on fourth down. Eight completions, four touchdown passes. Fourth and four. May gets rid of it quickly. Receiver wide right open. Morales first down. Inside the 10 and down to the nine. It's first and goal for the Tar Heels. Wow, what execution here on fourth down. How about Kamari Morales? Going to be right here in the wing. Just going to the flats immediately. NC State. They were still talking and conversating right before that ball snapped. Nobody identifies Morales in the flats. And the biggest first down of the game for the Tar Heels. First and goal on the seven. May, quarterback run in trouble. And taken down for a loss of about four at the 11-yard line by Devin Van. So they get off schedule once they get to first and goal on the seven. Second and goal now back at the 11-yard line. Boy, Davin Van has been so good this year. Disruptive. Watch the punch and extension he gets. It sheds the block and gets Drake May to the ground. Perfectly done by Davin Van, who got rave reviews from Tony Gibson, has really stepped his game up significantly throughout the course of the season. Big play there on first down. Elijah Green running this time. And again, no running room. Maybe got a yard stretching out for it at the end. Engel and Moore team up on the tackle. It's third and goal from the 10. And is in four down territory, depending on what you get here on third down with 11.15 to go. Antoine Green's down here in the boundary. Could easily see, try to throw a fade to Green. Downs in the slot at the top. Got Downs up there in the slot, yep. 13th play of the drive for North Carolina. Play action. May in trouble. Bouncing off of defenders. Moving to his left. Now throws left side. It's caught but out of bounds. Incomplete pass. J.J. Jones was out of play. It's fourth and goal on the 10. And North Carolina will... Settle for the three points. Well, Drake May tried to buy as much time as he possibly could. He takes a shot as he delivers it just outside. Tried to drag the foot. Couldn't drag it. Out of bounds. Good try there by J.J. Drones. He did everything he could to keep that foot in the end zone. That pass sells wide. And a big stop for the Wolfpack defense. 27-yard try for Noah Burnett. 
Hit a 36-yarder earlier in the game. And misses that one. Wow. Pushed Ooh. it wide to the right. So it remains 17 to 10. Big miss by Burnett. So they get nothing out of maybe their best drive of the day. And they're still down seven at home to NC State early in the fourth still, though. 10.37 left. So Noah Burnett misses a field goal that would have cut the deficit to four. But still need more out of Drake, May, and company. You see the numbers. Meanwhile, Ben Finley in his first career start. Throws complete here to the right side of Daryl Jones. Gain of about five on the play. Again, if you're just joining us, Devin Leary was the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. About midway through the season, suffered a pectoral tear that cost him the rest of the year. They went to a true freshman in N.J. Morris, the first true freshman quarterback to start in North Carolina State since Phillip Rivers back in 2000. He's been hurt. Jack Chambers started a few games. Then Ben Finley came off the bench, provided a spark, yet in defeat last week, but earned the starting job and has played brilliantly. Just throws it away mm -hmm. here. Could that be grounded? Yes, it could be. In the pocket. It was, the I'll officials be are going to talk about it. be surprised if we don't see a flag here, Dave. Receiver ran a slant, so there's nobody there where he threw it. It's one of the yep. first mistakes we've seen Ben Finley make in this ballgame, guys. Intentional grounding. Offense number 10. So lots of down for spot of the foul. Third down. Right. A guy with more experience probably moves outside the pocket Correct. before he throws it, right? Correct. Absolutely. And you saw Rucker there, 25. He buzzed out, dropped out into coverage, and was trying to rob the slant. So Finley had to hold the football. Pressure was coming, and he just throws it away. He doesn't move outside the pocket. Mistake there by the redshirt freshman. And this guy was a scout team quarterback a couple of weeks ago. And now he's here at Chapel Hill trying to lead his team to a huge win. Third and long, pressure in the face of Finley in the pass behind the intended receiver, incomplete. Cedric Gray with coverage on Jordan Houston. So that's a quick three and out for NC State. And fourth down. I, I think this might be a fumble, you know, guys. Right. I think this might be a fumble. This ball goes backwards here by Ben Finley. Watch the football. Watch where it's at. Uh, Boy, I don't it know. is close. I don't they, know either. They actually have said it's a, it's a fumble. fumble. It is close. They put the ball at the two-yard line. Again, you have to have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn the ruling on the field. That's why the ruling on the field is so critical here. It is so close. Initially watched it live, I thought, man, that is very close. Seeing it on the replay really confirms that. A massive call coming up. Was it forward pass or was it a fumble? We'll find out. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the means. So they've overturned the ruling on the field of a backwards pass. It was a forward pass. You can see this pretty clearly here. Yep. So Standing on the 10, ball is clearly there at the 11. Pretty easy and quick review there once they took a look at it. Boy, Ben Finley, the first time we've seen him look like a freshman tonight, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, that grounding penalty after getting five or six yards on first down really hurt him. Newcastle to punt again. And he's been good until now. And this checks up. Wow! There's a flag down, though. It's down to around the 38-yard line, so a punt of only 18 yards, but there was... Some hand fighting downfield at about midfield. I think the headlinesman might call this one off, guys. Well, this would be huge for North Carolina if they do pick the flag up and they get possession at the 38. Again, an 18 yard punt. A lot of discussion out there. And when the flag was initially thrown, the headlinesman immediately went to the official that threw the flag. Jalen Brooks is the young man in question, I believe. He's pleading his case to, to Mac Brown, saying he didn't do anything wrong. See what they say. After further conversation, there is no foul on the play. It'll be North Carolina football first down. So the
Tar Heels, who just missed a field goal, get another chance to tie the game with 9.41 to go. Let's go to Kevin in the studio. Okay, time now for AT&T countdown to the CFB National Championship. Number 18, UCLA in trouble at Cal here, Jesse. And Jack Plummer, the Purdue transfer at quarterback, doing a really nice job working through his progressions in this game. He's already thrown three touchdowns. Dorian Thompson Robinson, he is the workhorse for the Bruins, Bug. I love it. Empty formation, looks down, nobody's open, takes off, doing what he does best, run the football. 21-17, second half about to start. Powell with the lead, Dave. All right, guys, 17-10 here. North Carolina State leading. Drake May fires complete. And Check that J.J. Jones on the catch. It's a gain of 18 to the 20. We'll talk about going up and getting it when you need it. This pass away from the framework goes up with strong hands, secures that catch, and quality yards after that outstanding grab for Jones. A couple of drops he had early. Remember, you go back to the first quarter. We well, paid it off there with a very, very nice snare. Approaching the nine-minute mark here in the fourth quarter in Chapel Hill. A run green, got some room. Nice open field tackle by Peyton Wilson at the 16-yard line. So a gain of about four for Elijah Green, who had just 69 carries all season coming into today. He's got 18 attempts in this one, including a touchdown. Eight touchdowns this season, all in the last six games. I like the hesitation, and I like the jump cut there, making the initial defender miss. May holding onto the ball. Now sidearms it complete across the middle. And Green inside the 15, down to the 13. Van on the tackle. It'll be third down and four. You'd like to see him get north and south right now. Start running east and west. And Antoine Green's been key piece catching the football here today, but catches that ball, runs backwards. Thought if he would have just turned over the shoulder, he would have been close to getting to the sticks. Another big third down here. Josh Downs, typically, this is where they go in these spots. NC State bringing pressure. May in trouble, steps up, takes off inside the 10. Into the end zone, touchdown, North Carolina. He's their leading rusher. And he just hit Pater as a runner for the sixth time this year. The Tar Heels with a chance to tie the game with a point after. We've talked all night about his mobility. You're going to see pressure come off the edge. It, good job picking it up. And Drake May sees that little sliver of daylight, and he calls his own number. And then it's just a foot race, a nice little stiff arm as he takes into the end zone. Huge touchdown for Drake May in North Carolina. That's the 40th touchdown that May has accounted for this year. Leads the country in total offense. Meanwhile, Isaiah Moore, important player for NC State on defense, is banged up. Drake May leading the country and come from behind. Second half wins with six. And he just led the team down the field. Chance to tie the game with a Noah Burnett point after. Keep in mind, Burnett. Granted, the angle was much different. Just missed a 27-yard field goal on the last possession. That was from the near hash mark, though. And Burnett buries that one. We are tied. A flag comes in. This could impact field position, depending on where who it's again, Shaheen Battle of North Carolina State. Looked like he was in the backfield. Kicker took a shot. North Carolina's going to be kicking off near midfield. If that's the case. Running into the kicker. Defense number 25. That pop is declined. He's up there trying to try and Oh, so it's running into the kicker and thought if it was roughing, then maybe they'd take it on the, uh, the kickoff, but running into, so it's declined. Yeah, a little bit of an acting yeah, job. Okay, too, that, yeah. yeah, not so much of a shot. <laughs> right. as he was acting yeah. like he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our athletic trivia question. Mac Brown is one of five active FBS head coaches with a national championship. Who are the other four? 
I'm just going to throw Nick Saban out there just so we don't have to start thinking about that. One, Come right? on. All right, so who are the other three? Challenge us. Well, Kirby Smart won it last year. Right, Dabo so Sweeney. Who are the other Dabo okay. Sweeney's won two. One, you got one left then. Uh, I'll give you a hint. He's kind of struggling right now. Kind of struggling right now. And he's at a different school than when he won the national Jimbo championship. Jimbo Fisher. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Goodness gracious. Two from the ACC. So 7.53 to go. NC State going to get the ball back. We're told that Storm Duck starting corner is done for the day. So that's three starters in the secondary who are out. There was one of them that was out. Tony Grimes coming into today. Cameron Kelly and Storm Duck. Cameron Kelly and Storm Duck both go down in this game. So that's three guys Affleck. down now. Let's answer the Affleck trivia question. Again, Mac Brown, one of five active FBS head coaches in the national championship. There are the other four. We got it. Hopefully yes. you at home did as well. What do I win? <laughs> a handshake and a pat on the back. We Does that work? The opportunity to call a great rivalry yes. matchup, 17 all. Hope everybody's had a happy Thanksgiving to this point. Probably on your fourth plate of food, sitting back and enjoying the show. Hopefully you haven't spent too much money today on Black Friday. Ball on the NC State 25, midway point of the fourth quarter. New game. And they're going to run it up the middle with Michael Allen. And they get about four from the true freshman who has been the go-to guy the last four games. He had only ten carries all season until about three weeks ago, and now he's become their workhorse back. Well, it's been a real story today. Gene Chizik's got to be proud of his run defense. They've struggled mightily at times this year. Only surrendered 46 yards on the ground to this Wolfpack team, and we knew coming in, Tim Beck told us we've got to be able to run the football. North Carolina, they've been stingy against the run here all day. Finley to the air on second down, and it's pulled in for a first down by Sebro. They're trying to rip it out. Now they blow it dead at the 38. First down for the Wolfpack. Zebro just refused to go down. Continue to kind of just lean and churn forward. Nice pickup and yet another good find there from Ben Finley. That said Zebro. His brother Fred is a tight end as well. Said wears 47. Fred wears 48. Inside seven minutes to play. New set of downs on the 38 for NC State. Play fake for Finley. Pressure in his face. Throws deep middle. Almost intercepted by Chapman. Oh boy, Ben Finley can breathe a big sigh of relief here. Just uh, potentially had his biggest mistake of the game. It's an excellent inside rush. Miles Murphy does a great job collapsing this pocket. Pressure right in the face of Finley, and he throws it up middle of the field. And Chapman does not accept the gift right there in his hands, and he's kicking himself. And Finley gets to live to fight another down. I think it's the first time we've called Miles Murphy's name today. Finley back to throw. They're trying to set up a wide receiver. Screen, but it's read well. Marcus Allen, a true freshman with the tackle. On Michael Allen, a loss of about five. It's going to bring up third and long. Well, you documented and talked about the injuries. Insert a true freshman. And boy, he comes up with a huge tackle for loss. Screens really hurt North Carolina a week ago against Georgia Tech. Gene Chizik said, we worked on it all week. We had to get better. Great recognition, great tackle, setting up third and very long. Seen Carter be the go-to guy for a lot of today. He's top of your screen. Finley's pass batted up into the air and is caught by an offensive lineman. Chandler Zavala out to the 34-yard line. I think it was deflected by Michael Allen, the running back. Officials are having a conversation about this. I think because it was tipped. It shouldn't be an issue with an offensive lineman catching the football downfield.
Definitely hit 24 right there on his elbow. Allen wasn't even ready for it. Officials are still talking with the flag down. After further discussion, there is no foul for illegal touching on the football. NC State will punt it away. 5.44 to go. North Carolina will get it back with all of its timeouts. Wow, big stop there by the Carolina defense. Give Drake May and this offense the ball back one more time. Gene Chizik got to be fired up. And by the way, back to our athletic trivia question. I know he's not a head coach, but Gene Chizik also won a national championship back in 2010 at Auburn. So maybe we can add one more to the list, but proud of his defense and the effort they gave there on that crucial possession. Won it with Cam Newton as the quarterback. The previous play is under further review. So they're going to look at this, see if it was deflected at all by North Carolina player. Assuming that's it, right? They're looking to see if a North this season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. So ruling on the field stands. It was deflected by an NC State offensive player. Here's the punt. Downs is the deep man signaling for the fair catch. Has it around the 28. There is a penalty marker down. Flag came out immediately, Dave, as soon as that ball was snapped. It's on North Carolina. Let's take a look at that last Drake May touchdown. They're going to bring the pressure. Tony Gibson dials up. Watch Elijah Green. The running back. On the defense of the pressure off the edge. Off the center. Gives Drake May the opportunity to run. And then it's Drake Thomas, Drake May. We featured him all game. Drake May with a little stiff arm. Off to the end zone. Huge play on what's been a pretty pedestrian day for Drake May to step up in that spot and make that touchdown run to tie this game up. Absolutely huge. And how about the job by our guy, Lou Russo, drawing up those plays, diagramming it. Beautiful. Played some wide receiver also at LaSalle High School for Phil Longo. So well done there all the way around. A trip to New York, perhaps, and the Heisman Trophy ceremony hanging in the balance for Drake May, who almost seemed assured a spot in New York City before last week. He scored the game tying touchdown with a run. See what he does here in this drive. Going to hand it off to Elijah Green off the left side. No running room whatsoever. In fact, he lost a yard. Corey Durden, the nose man. Makes the hit at the 26, a loss of one. Durden's been a monster in the middle of that defense all day long. Just so tough to move. A good battle going on between him and Corey Gaynor. So to tough. this game. Yeah, so tough to get to the linebackers, Dusty. You know that playing tackle. Second down and 11. Made to the air. Here comes pressure off the edge. May sensed it, steps up, dangerous pass, and it's intercepted by Tanner Engel. A huge pass. Inside the Carolina 30. Drake Thomas came with pressure. May saw it. And don't know if it got tipped at the line or just a bad throw, but Engel with the interception. Well, this Wolfpack defense, it's been ferocious and relentless all night. Drake Thomas going to come around the edge, never stops, never quits. May tries to get out of it, steps up. I think 45 Van might have got a hand on it. And then it's an outstanding job there by Tanner Engel, who's been all over the field in the run game with a crucial interception here. Wow, one hand brings it into the body, and the Wolfpack in business after the takeaway. On a play. Only the fifth interception thrown by Drake May. Engel has been all over the field today. First team all ACC a year ago. And NC State with 4.46 to go. Takes over inside the 30. Looking to retake the lead. Going to keep it on the ground with Jordan Houston. Power Eccles tackles him at the 26. A pickup of three. 
Back to that play. Talk about team defense, Dave. You got Drake Thomas, the blitzing linebacker, Davin Van, the defensive lineman getting his hand up, and then the safety, Tanner Ingle, making the play. All three levels affected that takeaway. It's such a crucial spot in this game. And remember, though he's missed a kick earlier, one of the best kickers in all of college football and best kickers in the history of the ACC, Christopher Dunn, they're waiting for the Wolfpack. Play action pass downfield, and it's incomplete. Carter couldn't hang on. Legend Cavazos does a good job defensively there, so it's third down and seven. That's excellent there by Cavazos. Undercuts that route. I thought it was going to be there for Carter. Really nice job getting the left hand in there and creating the pass breakup. Christopher Dunn, the kicker for NC State, had made 22 in a row. All 22 of his attempts until the last time on the field when he missed a 43-yarder. From here, it would be about a 43-yarder. But still, third down and seven. They have yet to convert on third down this half. Finley back to throw, looking down the sideline, back shoulder, it's caught into the end zone, Devin Carter, touchdown NC State, what a throw by Finley in his first start. He has outplayed the Heisman Trophy candidate Drake May for the most part throughout this game. Sensational job right here by Ben Finley. Back shoulder only. His guy can make a play on this football. It's a stutter and go, and Cavallos doesn't even bite. Strong hands by Devin Carter. Cavallos never was able to turn around and locate the football. Perfect placement of that ball. Wow, what a play. What a touchdown pass. They take Finley. advantage of the Turnover by May. They strike quickly. North Carolina now down seven. 3.54 to go. Two touchdowns passing for Ben Finley. Devin Carter's been excellent all game. Isolated up top into the boundary. You see the stutter and go. Cavallos plays it pretty well. He's in good position. Ball a little bit underthrown. Back shoulder. And it's a fantastic adjustment by Devin Carter to bring that pass in and walk into the end zone. We talk about turnovers all the time. They're important, but what do you do with the football after the turnover? The Wolfpack defense takes it away from Jake May, and boy, Ben Finley pays it off. A huge touchdown pass. You talked about the team defense, right? You had Drake Thomas off the edge. You got another guy deflecting, hitting the arm of the quarterback, a third guy making the interception, and then they cut it loose with Ben Finley throwing it perfectly to Devin Carter for the go-ahead score. But still plenty of time for the Tar Heels. It'll come out to the 25, but first, let's go to Kevin in the studio. Day time now for the Mayhem Owen, brought to you by All Say the Duel in the Desert. Here's the situation. Arizona up by three. Arizona State picked off. Trenton Borgay, Isaiah Taylor is there. And then the celebration for the Wildcats. Uh, here comes the Mayhem on the field. And Arizona will get the Territorial Cup 38-35. They hold on. Meanwhile, Billy Napier, first Florida, Florida State experience. Come your way in less than an hour. Prime time on ABC. The Gators and the Seminoles. Back to you, Dave. All right, Kevin. And in this rivalry game, it's the road team, NC State, leading by seven. But one more chance, at least one more. For Drake May, who's been sensational. ACC Offensive Player of the Year candidate. Heisman Trophy candidate. Let's see what he does after the interception. First down from the 25. May over the middle, and it's caught for a big play out to the 45 to the tight end, Brian Nesbitt. Been waiting for Nesbitt to step up and make a play. Typically so good over the middle of the field. Zone coverage as soon as he clears the backers, Drake May finds his big tight end. Going up tempo. May with time, everybody covered. Now May checks it down. Pass midfield is Elijah Green. And to the NC State 43-yard line for another first down. This, this is, looks like the Drake main we've seen all year. Ripping it up the seam to his tight end, moving around, finding 
a target in the flats, and then very quickly, North Carolina past midfield. Isaiah Moore has been banged up a couple times in this game and injured once more. Don't forget later tonight on ABC, you got Florida, Florida State. Tomorrow, ABC, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, ABC, ESPN app. It's USC and Notre Dame. And, of course, a ton more great games throughout the day on the ESPN networks. Starting tomorrow at noon, college game day obviously precedes. Some boos here from the North Carolina fans. They didn't like to see the injury by Isaiah Moore. Stop the momentum of North Carolina, which moved down the field pretty quickly in two plays all the way to the 42 of NC State. I think it was Tanner Ingle, too. I think it was multiple Wolfpack players. Tanner Ingle being helped off the field. Don't need him going down. Oh, man. He's been such a key piece to this defense. Dusty, you talk about this tempo. You know, I think this is North Carolina's comfort zone. They just haven't been able to make any plays to go into tempo. May off play action. Looking deep. Airing it out. Got single coverage. Incomplete. Trying to hit Antoine Green. Aiden White, who's been really good in coverage all day, was there again. Outstanding coverage down the field. Aiden White, big time cornerback. The one thing we talked with Tony Gibson, balls in the air. We see corners in college football panic all the time. You can see right there, no panic whatsoever. He's in great position and forces an incompletion on the deep shot. Ten targets for Green, seven catches. Ten targets for Josh Downs, just four catches. May in trouble, gets out of there. What a move that time. Good recovery, though, by Wilson to keep it. At a three or four yard gain instead of maybe a first down or more. We already saw the athletic ability on full display on that touchdown run by May. We're at the three minute mark. Four down territory for North Carolina. Third down and seven at the NC State 39. Had some success with Kamari Morales. 88 to tight end on the wing position. We saw him earlier in a crucial fourth down. They have D.J. Jones in a running back. They like to throw it to him. Here's pressure off the edge. Quick pass to the right is caught at the 35-yard line by Blackwell. But he's short of the line to gain. Fourth down and two. Wilson and White team up on the stop. Carolina has to go for it. Huge play here for Drake May and North Carolina. Obviously got three timeouts. Can still get the ball back with a stop, but man. On the move here, you'd like to find a way to convert. Fourth down and three. NC State almost offside. Yes, they were. Free play. Here's Blackwell going up high, incomplete. <laughs> NC State jumped into the neutral zone. Offside. Defense number 24. Derek Pitts, costly penalty. First down, North Carolina. You've got to be anticipating a hard count in this spot. I get it. I've jumped off sides many a times. But you know the hard count's coming. Perfectly executed by Drake May. Pitch jumps, and that's a veteran center. As soon as that player moves off sides in the neutral zone, quick snap there by Corey Gaynor, drawing the flag. He's played a lot of football. Grad transfer from Miami. 2.04 to go. First down at the 30. Made a throw again. Swings it out of the backfield to Elijah Green. Good open field tackle at the 27-yard line by Battle. Pick up a three. Both teams with three timeouts. Second down and seven. North Carolina trying to get win number 10. It will be in the ACC championship game regardless of the outcome today. May running it, and May has a first down. And down to the 18. Clock will stop to reset the chains. They're in the red zone. Minute 34 on the clock right now. Fake the swing screen to the field. Run quarterback draw back to the boundary. Well designed and executed there by North Carolina. You get your big left guard. Montalus out in front. Drake May moves the chains. Elijah Green with the carry inside the 15. Knocked to the ground of the 13 by Wilson. Clock at 110 and counting. North Carolina and North Carolina State, for that matter, holding on to their timeouts. Seems like Max okay with saying this is it. 
We're going to take this down. Going to be potentially the last possession and no hurry whatsoever. The three timeouts in the pocket. Now a timeout called by NC State with 50 NC seconds State remaining. NC State takes first time out of the half. The 30 second length. So second and four for North Carolina on the 17 yard line. Second and five actually. They passed us, you check in the booth, Tom Lugan, Bill, down to the field. So how do you handle this if you're North Carolina? you got obviously the option with Drake May to run the ball. Yeah. We saw it on that last play. We also saw it on the touchdown. No question. And, you know, Josh Downs, I just think about him. He hasn't had a big presence. He had the drop against Georgia Tech. Still think if you can find a way to get him open and deliver him the football, he's one of the best receivers in college football over the last two years. He would be a guy that I, for Phil Longo, I'm trying to create some space, trying to create a play that gets him open and gives him an opportunity to make up for the unfortunate drop a week ago. And Downs only has four catches on 10 targets in this game. Likely a high draft pick, first or second round. He knows very well about this rivalry. His dad was a great player in NC State. Gary Downs had played in the NFL. Operates really good in small spaces. His short air quickness is phenomenal. Which obviously here Field shrinks as you get closer to the end zone. But Drake May is a runner, always an option in this area, as we saw earlier on the touchdown run. Well, NC State come after it. May from the pocket, moving to his left, keeping the play alive. And now just throws it out of bounds. He was very close to crossing the line of scrimmage, but did not. Still third down and five, obviously four down territory, 42 seconds left, trailing by seven. I've seen this North Carolina team in these situations all throughout the year. More times than not, Drake May's been able to come up with a play to put Carolina in position to win. Third down and five. May to throw again, pump fake. May moving to his left, flips it into the end zone, incomplete, and he had downs. He had him, but a misfire, and it's fourth down with 36 seconds to go, down seven. Oh man, this is one Drake May wishes he could have back. Great route here by Downs. Comes open in the corner, and that ball just overshot of his intended target. You knew they were gonna have to try to find a way to get Josh Downs open. They had that opportunity and weren't able to take advantage of it. And again, this play here doesn't have to go to the end zone. Just got to get past Correct. the eight-yard line, get a first down. You have all your timeouts. There's plenty of time on the clock. And Dusty, that's the throw he made to Josh Downs last week and got the drop. Another timeout by NC State. NC State takes its second One left time out of the, the half. Pack. Your 30 second timeout. All right, so what do you expect here? Fourth down and five. You get May outside the pocket. He stayed in the pocket here the last two times and left on his own. Do you design something for him outside the pocket or no? I think you leave him in the pocket and know that he has good enough field that if pressure comes from the edges, he can tuck it and become a runner. Antoine Green, I think, is also a great option in this spot. He's got great size. We've seen him have a huge impact on this game here so far. Well, Dusty, look, the ball's in the middle of the field as well, so it kind of limits your pocket mobility as a design to play because you don't have a wide side of the field. They're going to put DJ Jones in the game and running back. Again, he's their third down back. Even though it's fourth down, they do like to throw it to him. He's good in protection, too. Yep. He's really good in protection, so that could be want to keep him in just to help protect. I would expect dropping eight in a three-man rush here. Fourth down and five for North Carolina, down seven. May, with time, moves to his right, ran into his own guy. Now throws back across the middle. Oh, what a catch by Nesbitt for a first down inside the five. Clock will stop. They'll get rid of the chains, and then they'll start it on the ready for play. North Carolina does have three timeouts, but it looks like they're going to go with tempo here. Nesbitt at 6'5", climbs the ladder. Huge conversion on fourth down. The clock is moving for NC State to substitute. Clock is at 17. And now we have a stoppage of play. Boy, Whoa. the officials 
A timeout called by Ooh. NC State. There was a player that ran NC off State late after it looked like there. the official had placed the ball in for ready for play. The, one of the other officials didn't see it. I'm also surprised North Carolina just didn't well, call a timeout. They have three. And it looked like Carolina changed personnel, right? Because Elijah Green came into the game. So with as the rules go, you have the opportunity to change your personnel. But to your point, when that happened, you should have called the timeout so that you don't waste any clock. Well, I tell you what, a six foot five, 230 pound tight end, he's always a good option in this area, too. And Drake May, boy, cardinal sin, right, Tom? <laughs> Rolling to your right, throwing late back across against your body, not supposed to do it. But boy, it paid dividends on this crucial fourth down to keep the Tar Heels. Well, and what saved him too, Dusty, is he had a big target and he game. threw it high, right? So you give him a chance to go up and secure the ball. Yeah, let him go make a play. Keeping this Tar Heels team alive in this ball game. They're going to put four seconds back on the clock. North Carolina was trying to call timeout. They thought that either NC State was offside or that the substitution, one of the officials didn't see that the substitution had already passed. That time had already passed and they had their guys on the field and they were supposed to place the ball ready for play. First and goal from the four. May dumping it off to Elijah Green. Got to get out of bounds. Fighting for yardage. He's out at the two. Again, they have their timeouts, but really wasn't much there. Second and goal from the two. 12 seconds to go. 12 seconds. Get your full allotment of timeouts. Take a chance at running it here. I, I think so. Give it to 21, That's man. That's what I'm doing. That counter's worked to perfection quite a bit of the day. Yep. Elijah Green. They got three tight ends in the game here. Pitch to Green deep as he catches it at the 10, and he's knocked down at the four. They got to call a timeout, and they do. With eight seconds to go, it's a two-yard loss, and Tanner Engel again, along with Betty, make the tackle at the four. And Betty's in for more. Excellent job. They go trips to the boundary, and it's a quick flip. Haven't seen this all game long, and it's played perfectly by NC State. How about Tanner Engel? Game he's had here today. Plays off the block. Guys, of Morales. Dusty, we've seen NC State defender. We've seen so many negative plays. What do you think about the call to, to pitch hey, it back that deep when they've been getting in the backfield so often in this game? Not a fan. I, I did not like it. I, I was surprised we saw that, to your point. This is a aggressive attacking defense. They did a nice job getting off those blocks, playing on the other side of the football. And it also took a while, too, with that pitch running outside. Eight seconds left. They should have run split zone or counter to your point, Dusty, and get downhill in a hurry. I would have pulled, I would have ran counter. I would yep. have got a big 63 out in front or pulled the backside. You saw Barnes and Rollins do a nice job earlier, open up a big path. That's the eighth tackle for a loss. Eight seconds remaining. North Carolina down seven, third and goal on the four. Three and 11 up top. Down in motion now. Play fake. May in trouble with. Three seconds left, throws, and caught for a touchdown by Copenhaver. They're point after away from tying the game with no time on the clock. Drake May comes through again for UNC. Wow! How about this throw? And how about this catch? John Coppenhaver, we haven't said his name much at all. He missed last week. Unbelievable finish as we're going to confirm that catch here in Chapel Hill. Did he secure that thing all the way through the process the of the catch? catch for a touchdown. That play is under further review. Looked like he did. Noah Burnett. On for the point after. Remember, he missed a 27-yarder, but then came back and drilled an extra point. On the last possession, let's take another look here. If Copenhaver pulled it in, I thought he did live. It looked on our first replay. So he had it. Move. Drake May is just so good on the move. Rolling to his left, back across. 
perfectly plays football. And how about Copenhaver? Full extension, lays out to bring that ball in. Wow. If this is incomplete, but it's not, the game would be over because obviously there's no time left. It's the best look here, Dave. It's a catch. His first touchdown of the season. What a throw. Ooh, Wait a second. I don't know. On, guys. I don't Roll know. Roll that back a second. Roll that back if I... you can. Did it hit the ground? Well, I don't know. And did he Tip lose possession? Ball. If you guys can show oh. us. Did he have his hand underneath it? It's hard to tell. Again, you have to have indisputable video evidence, evidence beyond all doubt to overturn the ruling on the field of a catch. It's hard to tell. Does it hit the ground? Does he lose control and it hit the ground there? Or is it still in his possession? Watch this angle here. Does he lose possession? He starts to see it slip. At the ball. Where's that bottom hand? Did the ball hit the ground? It sure looked like it hit the ground. Did he, did he have control? Those are the football. I think it's going to be yeah, incomplete. I, and those are the football hit the ground. Looked like he lost control. And it helped him the game regain would be over. control. Wow. Again, it has to be beyond all doubt. And that angle, the other angle was great. Looked like it, it hit the turf and he lost possession of it. Game would be over. North Carolina State would win. It had us fooled. We thought for sure he had it. The only thing would be, is there a chance that time expired when it shouldn't have and that maybe they put a At second the further, back on the clock? The receiver did not maintain possession of the catch. So there you go. Wow. So they're putting two seconds back on the clock. NC State is celebrating as if it won the game, but they're putting two seconds on the clock. It's fourth down, one more chance for North Carolina. That's the right call, ladies and gentlemen. They got this right. Replay worked. Valiant effort by Maine. Copenhaver, and that's right. Time on the clock. You, NC State was in full-blown celebration mode. They're running down the sidelines, <laughs> and now they had to come back for a fourth down that will decide this ball game. Incredible. Last year was nuts in Raleigh. Drake May, who's been so brilliant all season long with one last chance. Down seven. Fourth down, two seconds left. May standing back of the end zone. It's caught. Well, Drake May saved his best for the last at the end of this ball game. Not very productive all game, and he comes up with no time left on the clock. As you see Antoine Green push this route up, it's a dig and a strike. Right on the number for a touchdown to potentially tie this game. Again, Burnett missed a 27-yard field goal earlier, but nails that one, and we are going to overtime in Chapel Hill. Drake May, 41st touchdown accounted for. Trying to get to New York City, get the Heisman Trophy discussion. What a play. We got overtime. Drake May, sensational. Down the stretch, a couple of great throws. The first one was dropped by Copenhaver. We thought initially that that had tied the game, or at least put him in position to tie with an extra point, but then the throw to Antoine Green does just that. Each team gets one possession from the opponent's 25-yard line. Must go for two after a touchdown starting in the second overtime. Once we hit a third OT, if we get their only two-point conversion attempts. NC State won the toss, elected to go on defense first. So Carolina running the ball with Elijah Green to the left. And it's a gain of four down to the 21. Elijah Green really had a nice day on the ground. Every yard is tough to come by against this Wolfpack defense. Nice little piece of running there on first down. 
How about Drake May? First three quarters of this game, 15 to 26, 116 yards in the fourth quarter, threw for 110, and that game time touchdown. Wow, making a statement here at the end of this ball game. On second and seven, May to the sideline. It's caught by Downs, pushed out of bounds right at the 10. So it's first and goal. Shaheen battle in coverage. With a lot of cushion over there for battle. Yeah. You see tonight, NC State really be up, be physical with these wide receivers. Gave Josh Downs almost 8 to 10 yards of cushion, an easy pitch and catch. No, Dusty got a 6-2 corner over there matched up against an undersized receiver that's really good in short area. That might have been reason for the cushion. Just the fifth catch of the day for Downs. Antoine Green has been the go-to guy for May for the most part today. First and goal on the 10. And they're going to hand it off and dumped in the backfield is Green for a loss of four or five. Devon Betty has made a couple of plays in the North Carolina backfield. That's 10 tackles for a loss for NC State in this game. And NC State bringing the house. Tony Gibson dialing up. Brought both backers off the edge, Wilson and Thomas. And then Betty up the middle. Selling out, anticipating an inside run. It paid dividends. Betty has played a lot for an injured Isaiah Moore. Here is May inside the 10 and down to the 8. Wilson and Clark drag him down. So it is third and goal from the 8-yard line for North Carolina. Here in the first overtime in Chapel Hill. North Carolina, regardless of the outcome, will play for the ACC championship next week against Clemson. Their college football playoff hopes went away with a loss at home last week to Georgia Tech. NC State trying to get to eight wins before the bowl game. Third and goal from the eight. Drake May on the rollout to his right. Looking, waiting, now throwing back in the end zone, and his receiver fell down. J.J. Jones was open in the back of the end zone. Van had pressure on May, and it's fourth down, and here comes a field goal try. Yeah, and as Drake May rolled to his right, running out of real estate, you see Jones try to come open. That's just incidental contact with Fagan and him. And so Noah Burnett, who missed a 27-yard field goal earlier in the game, on now for a 25-yarder to give North Carolina the lead. And the kick is good. NC State needs a field goal to tie and can win with a touchdown. Well, that NC State defense had been on the field for a long time. That final possession felt like it took an hour. And in that opening possession, they bow their neck, they get the stop, force the field goal. And now it's been Finley's turn to play hero. A guy who was a scout team quarterback just a few weeks ago, but because of injury, was the fourth, the fourth man on the depth chart about a month ago has been the starter. He's been great for the most part here today, and he's got the football in overtime with a chance to go on the road in Chapel Hill and slay their rival. 244 passing yards and two touchdowns for Finley. First time since 1953 that NC State has had to start four different quarterbacks this season. Finley to the end to the right it is caught inside the 15 by Michael Allen the running back and it's a first down to the 13 so a gain of 12. I like that route there in combination they put Julian Gray in the backfield and faked like they were going to throw a swing to him Michael Allen faked like he was going to block and then kept going taking his route up the field and a nice find there by Ben Finley up top you got Carter on a true freshman and Marcus Allen Going to hand it off to Allen inside the 10. Stacked up at the 9. Power Eccles in there first. Gain of four. Second down and six coming up. NC State at one point this year was ranked in the top 10, but all kinds of injuries, not just the four quarterbacks they've had to use. On defense, they've lost key players at every level. On the offensive line, they don't have their starting center. Yet here they are fighting on the road. They had a 
17 to 10 lead. North Carolina tied it. NC State went up 24-17. Carolina tied it again. And now we have a pre-snap penalty on NC State. Start, start. It's on the true freshman back, Michael Allen. So it'll be second down and 11 now. Dusty, you got to wonder if number 88 at some point here has to be a target on a jump ball in the end zone. Yeah, look, Devin Carter's been the go-to guy. Yep. Up top in the boundary. They just moved Marcus Allen from over there over to the field. Got Cavasso's working on him. What about Thayer Thomas? He's been quiet. Just two catches for two yards today. On second down and 11, Finley pressure in his face, throws into the end zone, incomplete. And he was going for Thomas. Rucker was in the face that time of Finley. It is third down and 11. And well defended down the field, an excellent job on the loop there by Kamen Rucker coming inside, forcing that pressure right in the face of Ben Finley. Nice stunt there inside by the Carolina front. First overtime, third down and 11, a field goal to tie, touchdown to win. Press coverage up there in the boundary. They give a safety over the top. Quick throw, back shoulder, incomplete. He was going for Devin Carter, and Cavazos, who's played so well for the injured Tony Grimes, Made the play to force a field goal, try to tie the game. You just feel it coming. They don't bring a safety over the top. Cavasso's getting good position, trying to get that head back around. They're both just kind of fighting, jockeying for position. And a big stop for Gene Chizik and his defense. Christopher Don missed a 43-yarder. That ended a streak of 21 consecutive made field goals. Looking to send this to a second overtime, and it's perfect. From 31 yards, we're tied at 27 apiece. Overtime number two coming up from Chapel Hill. All right, Kevin, and in this situation, in the second overtime, if there's a touchdown, you have to go for two. North Carolina State will get possession first, and they run the ball. Jordan Houston up the middle doesn't get much, maybe two yards. Ritzy was there for the Tar Heels, second down and eight. Called Ritzy's name earlier in this game. He's been stout along that defensive line, as has this entire Tar Heels defense. Stingy against the run. I mentioned Thayer Thomas earlier. I'm surprised we haven't seen him get the football. You know, he's played so much ball for the Wolfpack. Be a crucial moment if he can get a look. Finley to throw with time. Fires it complete to the 10. It's Coleman again, and he's out of bounds at the eight yard line, a 15 yard gain, and it's first and goal for NC State. It's Cavazos this time. He's given a lot of cushion. He's set back in that deep zone, and it's a great find by Ben Finley. Devin Carter shut it down. A nice pickup to get him inside the 10. Carter has been the go-to guy for Finley throughout this game. First and goal on the eight. Going to keep it on the ground with Houston. He's down to about the three-yard line. Don Chapman on the tackle. Second and goal. First overtime game between these two teams since 2018. That was also here in Chapel Hill. And NC State won the game that day, 34-28. It's 27 apiece. Second and goal for the Wolfpack from the North Carolina Four. Got two tight ends in the game. And again, Houston, the running back. Ben Finley in his first career start at quarterback for NC State. He's going to throw a fade, left side, jump ball, and incomplete as Daryl Jones could not bring it down. True freshman Marcus Allen, who's had to play a ton today because of all the injuries on the back end, broke it up. Well, it's a well-placed football by Ben Finley. That's an excellent job by Allen. Looked like he had the catch. He comes in, rakes with the right hand, and the ball comes out, creating the incompletion. That's a big spot for a true freshman who's having to step up due to injuries, making a play. Third down and goal on the four. Finley from the pocket, steps up, lobs back at the end zone, incomplete. 
Cameron Walker, the intended receiver. And NC State will bring on the field goal team to try to take a 30 to 27 lead. Cayman Rucker again off the edge. Really nice job, but just a speed rush. He's their best rusher. Saw him affect the play on the first overtime. Affecting that play, not a clean pocket for Ben Finley. No one's open. He forces the incompletion. 21 yard field goal attempt. Christopher Dunn gives NC State the lead, 30 to 27. North Carolina needs a field goal to tie, a touchdown would win, a turnover would mean that NC State would be victorious here in double overtime. Wow, happy Thanksgiving. Feels like Christmas for a game <laughs> like this. It's incredible. How much fun is this? And we get again to watch one of the most talented young quarterbacks in all of college football Take center stage with the bright lights here on ABC on Black Friday against his rival coming off a tough game by far the worst game of his career last week and a loss to Georgia Tech wasn't a great first half Dusty but he's really bounced back here in the second half and in overtime wasn't a great first three quarters it's really been the fourth quarter because they were watching one of the great quarterbacks in the country it's one of the best defenses in the country he's having to combat they've had answers all day for the most part for Drake May we'll see if Tony Gibson's bunch can come up with an answer here in the second overtime. Elijah Green gets the touch here on first down. Push back at the 23. Trying to run on that stout front seven. Corey Durden, the nose tackle in there first. Gain of two, second and eight. And we've got an injured NC State player. It's Davin Van. Van, who's down for the Wolfpack. We asked Dave Doran this week, have, have you ever seen it this bad? And he said you know, a few years ago probably was worse, but in terms of the injuries, I think because of the quarterbacks, it feels worse that they're down to their fourth string quarterback, essentially, although boy, Finley has played so well today. So you're North Carolina, Dusty, second and eight. You're at the 23. How do you handle this possession? Obviously, you have that extra threat with Drake May as a runner. No question. And the mobility, right? And he's so lethal, as we've seen on the move. He can beat you from the pocket. He can beat you on the move as has been on display. Look, I don't, I don't think you try to roll him out off, you know, the, the beginning of the snap. I think you allow him to assess the situation. If there's an open man and he's got a clean pocket, he's going to shred you. And then obviously if there's pressure and he needs to ad lib and have somebody work to get open, he can do that as well. But I mean, look, what we saw earlier in this game, you know, Antoine Green, he's been a go-to guy throughout. Yep. And even Josh Downs, at the end of regulation, it was Josh Downs that he was looking to go to, was unable to find him. But to me, I look for either of those two guys in this spot. They've been the most reliable targets for Drake May all season. And I'd be surprised at some point if we don't see number 10 look their direction. North Carolina trying to win the ACC title for the first time since 1980. And we'll get it shot next week against Clemson. Down three here in overtime, number two. Second down and eight at the NC State 23. A touchdown would win the game for the Tar Heels. It would be just the second 10-win season for UNC in the last 25 years. The other in 2015, the last time they won the Coastal. May's pass to Downs is pulled in inside the 20. They'll spot it at the 18 for a gain of five. Third down and three. Ball out quick. See Josh Downs just sit down, play a little bit more of a deeper soft zone there for NC State. Sits down, locks up, but it's catch tackle like it's been most of the game against this Wolfpack defense. Critical down here. Ooh, boy. Third and three at the 18-yard line. Green to the left of May. NC State bringing pressure. May gets rid of it to the end zone for Downs. Diving attempt incomplete. We caught the ball, but the feet weren't in. You called it out. Pressure coming from the field. One on one. Downs working on pits. And that pass just sails too far. Unable to drag a foot or get anything in bounds. Sells wide and it's going to force a field goal attempt. What an effort. Noah Burnett missed a 27-yard field goal. 
in regulation, but made a 25-yarder in the first overtime, and now a 35-yard try to force a third overtime. And Dave Doran going to call a timeout here and try to freeze him. 36-yard attempt State officially is what we're looking at. Of overtime. So again, this was in regulation. 27-yard try from Noah Burnett. One of the reasons why Doran just called a timeout because we all saw this missing badly from that right hash mark. Stayed outside the entire time. Started outside, stayed outside. And again, now a 36-yard try to send it to a third overtime where it would be all two-point conversion tries. A miss means NC State wins. Ball's close to the right hash, too, which is almost identical to where it was before on the miss. No question. I always feel for these kickers in this spot. Can you imagine what's going on in the head of Burnett right now? Burnett to send it to a third overtime. What a game. And Noah Burnett pulls this one left. He pushed it earlier in the fourth quarter as they missed that field goal we just sh showed you. Almost as if he overcompensated, came across it, pulled it, did not hit it clean. Ball never really looked like it had a chance. Just a pull, and NC State comes in and pulls off the upset and gets a huge win in this rivalry. It's the second straight loss for North Carolina. Still a chance to win the ACC championship next week. Right. Meanwhile, NC State right. with eight wins, a chance to get nine in the bowl game. And Dave Doran, the head coach, standing by with Tom. Hey, coach. Well, Coach, it's Tanner Engel here and hey. Peyton Wilson. Hey, about that, man. Getting a little love with their head coach here. <laughs> this is what rivalry football is all about, Coach. Congratulations. This team has been through so much the last few weeks. How do you describe this feeling for your football team right now? Yeah, I mean, these guys got so much heart. I'm so proud of them. Nobody knows what we been. It's our four-string quarterback. He was on the scout team, you know? I mean, we're down so many players, and the heart of these guys, the staff, I'm super blessed and thankful. Thank you, God. Give them all the glory. How would you assess the performance of your defense versus what's been a vaunted offense for the vast majority of the season? It's the best defense in the conference, hands down. These guys, Tony Gibson, that staff, his players, the heart they got. Love it, man. I love that. It's such a great win. The leadership, Drake Thomas, all of your guys on offense, the veteran leaders, the plays Devin Carter made today coming back from injury. Just what do you have to say about the resiliency of this football team? Can't say enough, you know, and the guys that have been hurt have stepped in as leaders and coaches to help their teammates. So, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful group of guys, man. I'm blessed to be their coach and thankful to have this W with them. It's going to be a great night. Turn the red light on, Chancellor Woodson. Go Pack. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Wow. Well, Dave Doran had some strong words for his rival, North Carolina, when we met with him this week. Some of that, of course, was gamesmanship. But, man, did his team back it up with its play, winning in double overtime 30-27 to 27 here in Chapel Hill. For Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganbill, our entire outstanding ABC crew, and Dave Pash, so long from Chapel Hill. Now back to the studio, Kevin Agandi, Booger, Jesse Palmer.